It's starting. Yeah, it's live here. Let me go here and see if I can. What has it? There we go. Oh, 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 no. I do not want to see my. Okay. That is scary. I think we got it all set up. I don't know that we have anybody here yet, though. Oh, it says two watching now. That could be us, though. <laughs> oh, that's fine. It's not us. Hello. Welcome. And let me go to my phone. It'll be easier for me to read the comments on my phone. Comment and let us know who's all here. Hi, Emma. Hi, Emma. I think we'll give it a minute for uh, people to join before it's, it's, we like get into all of the uh, discussions. Trying to move things around so I can like see the video and see the comments. Yeah, I see the video. Hi, Caroline. Hi, Caroline. And aw. Thank you, Emma. I literally just touched up my hair like an hour ago. <laughs> oh, it looks good. Thank you. It was all faded. Why do I How's everybody doing today? Are you having a happy Saturday? Are you having a happy Saturday, Clint? Oh, yes, I am now that I'm off work. <laughs> work was so late. <laughs> Hi, Charlie. Hi, Charlie. <laughs> well, I got way too excited about that. <laughs> Clint just fangirled a little. <laughs> it's one of my sisters. One of the five. Oh, well, thank you, Emma. <laughs> Where are you located, Emma? Hello, Black Rose, and thank you. Let me bring that down here. No, 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 no. You better stay. Focused. So, can everybody hear both Clint and I? Okay, we were having issues with sound. Clint, your your computer's making lots of weird sounds. Yeah, I'm gonna unplug my phone from my computer. <laughs> Yeah, sorry about that. I don't feel like reaching to another plug, whatever. If my phone dies, it dies. I don't care at this point. <laughs> Anyone love the new setup? She, they can hear us both. And uh, oh, Emma was in the UK and is now in Michigan. Well, that would be a big difference, I think. Yeah. Uh, I use Manic Panic, which is like a, almost like a conditioner mask thing. You just put it on like after, like on clean, dry hair, you just put it on and let it sit. And after like, I don't know, however long, rinse it out in cold water. Thank you, Emma. Also, Charlie, text Emily, remind her of the show. <laughs> she might have forgot. <laughs> Okay, well, now that we have a few people here, I guess we could get started with everything. Hi, Nightbeer. <laughs> Clint's fangirling again. <laughs> I tend to fangirl if I talk to you, like, a lot on YouTube or Instagram or Twitter or Facebook or Snapchat or... I'm just a At all. very big fangirly person. <laughs> Oh, yeah, she probably is. So I'm curious to see how many people completed all of the challenges so far. I personally actually completed all of my challenges with two books that I read last weekend because the readathon started on Friday and by Sunday I had completed all five challenges. So this week I've been reading uh, bonus books. 
there are other books that complete the challenges again. So, I yeah. finished all in three books because the last couple of days I've been trying to read a book and my brain is not in the mindset of like, read, read. It's in the mindset of don't touch those. You need to organize your books instead. So, hint why the shelves look different. Let me grab so how many, how many books have you read at this point? Three. <laughs> Three and 27 pages of another. Ah. Oh. Okay, so what about all of you? How many books have you read Four pages. so far for this readathon? Comment in the little chat and let us know. I have read one, two, three, four, five, six, and I'm working on number seven. These are the three. Well, save some of it for your vlog. <laughs> I'm just like, these are the three. My vlogs are going to be very bad because I keep forgetting I need a vlog. It's been one of those weeks. Y'all may get a vlog of what my shelves look like now. Just so it has stuff in it. <laughs> so, last weekend, for and this is already out in my blog that I posted earlier this week. I read the group book, Summer of Salt, and I read Bull by David Elliott. And together, these completed all five challenges. This one was like, besides the group book, it also has water and yellow. This one also has yellow too, but it's also my less than 200 pages and set in another country. So everything was knocked out with those. And so this week I've read another book with yellow on the cover, another book that's got water on the cover and is less than 200 pages, another book that's less than 200 pages, another book that's less than 200 and has yellow on the cover, and now I'm reading a gigantic book that has water on the cover. <laughs> See, for Summer Assault, I counted it for water on the cover, um, group book, book or country, because the way that they describe by the seas island to me is Canada. I've always pictured Canada, like little island off the coast of Canada. I don't See, know I always picture it as like an island off of Massachusetts or New Hampshire or Rhode Island or something like that. But it's like off of like Ontario. <laughs> it's or not down either. Nightfair read two complete, one over half, one started, and one left to start. Okay. Charlie says, The Binding, The Winner of the Witch, Haunting the Deep, Skelling, and I am currently reading The Disappearance of Timothy Dawson. Sounds like a very witchy read time you had there, Charlie. <laughs> you had yeah. a theme going. At least three out of five. <laughs> oh, Nightcare couldn't get Summer Salt. So what did everybody that did read Summer of Salt, what, what are your thoughts on that book? There's my star rating. Just <laughs> I witch bug. Like, let's be honest. I gave it four stars. I really enjoyed it, but I, I had some issues with it that kept me from giving it a five star. I personally like figured out pretty much everything before. We got halfway through the book. So I knew it was like I knew what was coming. So nothing surprised me at all. And so that was kind of like a okay, it was still an enjoyable book. But that's why I gave it a four instead of a five, just because there wasn't any twist that I didn't see coming. See with the major twist in the book of what happened to, oh, I don't want to go spoilery. But the major twist that you know throughout the whole book is happening to her, but her sister can't see it. 
I'm trying to be as vague as possible here. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Like, I had a feeling, but I wasn't set in stone. Hi, Emily! But it's <laughs> like, I wasn't set in stone that that was going to be, like, the thing. I was like, oh, this such and such happened to such and such. I saw that coming, and then when it happened, I was like, what? It, I was right, what? Well, yeah, see, with, with me, like, the sister, not the main character, but the sister, mm -hmm. I understood what trauma, mm -hmm. I, you know, I figured that out. I figured out what was going on with her in the end. Um, very close to the beginning, I knew what was going on with the main character, with her ability. Um, just Yeah, it was like, I figured it all out right away, and I was just like, well, it's just playing out what I knew. <laughs> See, I gave it a five, probably because of the fact of the atmosphere of the book. Because I felt like I was there, and I saw everything through their eyes. It was really, really reminiscent of why I gave The Wicked Deep five stars. It kind of gave me um, practical magic vibes. Yes, very much so. Yeah, it gave it gave me practical magic vibes, which is, I mean, I really like that. I, I haven't read the book Practical, Ma practical Magic. Ugh, my tongue is getting all twisted. But... I have seen the movie and I really liked it. So, and this kind of gave me those vibes. I have the book right here. Okay. <laughs> does anybody, I know you do, Clint, but does anybody else have like a favorite quote from Summer of Salt? Anybody? Quote. Okay, Clint, I know, I, I'm sure you have at least one favorite quote that, from Summer of Salt. The only quote that pops to my mind. Uh, where is it? It's a little too spoilery because it's the the girl power quote where like she stood and then the lightning bolt and the that quote. I can't say that quote without ruining the book. <laughs> I I have one quote in all of this book marked and mine is we didn't okay. need princes. It's we didn't need princes. We saved ourselves. That's a good that was one. my favorite. I mean, I have more quotes in other books that I can pull off the shelf and be like, "Hey, <laughs> this book." <laughs> like, I have a clockwork prince prince down here, and I can pull out a couple of quotes. Oh yeah, I could definitely pull out some quotes from um, that. Hun Hunting Prince Dracula's right behind me. I could pull out some of those. But that was that was my favorite quote from this book. That was one of those like when I when I read something that is just like it really catches my attention, I'll write it on a little post-it note. And so I have one post-it note in this book. <laughs> okay, they want to hear the quote now. Let me find it. I didn't post it note it because I knew it was like a spoilery one. Where is it? Do you know what page that scene happens on? Uh, I don't know. Emily loves your shells, by the way, Clint. Thank you, Emily. Y'all will probably get more of an in-depth view of them in my vlog. Oh my gosh. I just looked down and realized because this, this shirt's like um... I like velvety and just a minute ago before the live show started Katniss is like all over me here so now I have like this layer of white cat hair attached to me <laughs> let's see I found the scene oh, okay well then you just keep looking while he looks for that what was Oh, thank you, Charlie. <laughs> While he looks for that, what was the favorite book that you read during this whole readathon? 
Which one is that, Clint? Um, the mermaid's voice returns in this one. Oh, is that the one that you sent me pictures of? Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. I need to read that. I'll read a poem out of that in a second while I'm looking for this after I find this quote. We've got The Binding, Enchante. Or I could also say Pretty Little Liars, even though I gave it a four star. My favorite out of all of the books that I've read was Bull. And it was probably one of the shortest books I read, but I freaking loved it. Oh my gosh. Amanda Lovelace, still need to get one of hers. I loved Kicking the Bucket List and The Acts of Kindness, although both made me cry. The Darkest oh. Star by Jennifer L. Armentrout. Oh, I'm actually reading uh, a Jennifer L. Armentrout book right now as uh, a water on the cover one. Oh. Because it has, like, raindrops on the cover. I think I know which one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Storm and Fury. Okay, phone needs to be plugged up. Hold on. Okay. I don't know if y'all ever heard of this book. I had never really heard of it. I got it one year. I... It was either this last November or the November before at Y'all Fest. I had no idea what it was about. I honestly thought it was middle grade, but it is very much not middle grade. Not from what you <laughs> It is not appropriate for middle grade. There is a lot of cursing in here, but it's so, so good. Like the quotes that you sent me, I was like, that is so not middle grade for should I, like, read the, the first little bit? Okay, so this, if you watch my vlog, I actually read this little bit in my vlog, too. So this is um, the story of Poseidon and Minos and Minos's wife um, gets with a bowl and creates... Um, Asterion, which is the Minotaur, which is the Lord of the Stars. And the way it's told is it's told in poems. And like each poem is a different person, like what they're saying. And then uh, like here's where the next person speaks. And, like, it's their thoughts and all of that. But Poseidon is the one that starts this out, and I just died with, like, the very first line. The first line was, what up, bitches? <laughs> and uh, I was, I was kind of hooked from that point. Okay. Do y'all want to hear? They do. There's a lot of yes. Okay. What up, bitches? Am I right or am I right? That bum Minos deserved what he got. I mean, I may be a god, but I'm not unreasonable. And when I am, so what? Like I said, I'm a god. Reason's got nothing to do with it. But let's get back to where it all started. Minos comes to me, mewling like a baby. Frowny-faced, heavy-hearted, he's got a hunger, he says. A hankering, a jones, a thing, but not for a woman. This jerk wants to be king of Crete. An island so dazzling, it could cure the friggin' blind. But it's not the friggin' scenery this friggin' Minos has in mind. Not the harbors or the shores, the god-possessed waters. Not the sheep, the trusted shepherds, their warlike sons, their lusty daughters. Not the olives or the figs, the sacred long-lived trees. Not the amber honey or the honey-making bees. Not the time-drunk lovers who sigh among its flowers. No, all this clown wants is a little power. He's got an appetite for obedience, but no imagination. And he doesn't ask for much, just his own private nation. So he wonders if I give the people an omen, a sign, something impressive, he says, something divine. Anything to prove he's the man for the royal job. So what the, I think, I'm going to help this slob. <laughs> I loved it. It was great. <laughs> it, it, um, it's like that pretty much throughout. And there, there's some raunchy parts in here too, because, you know, 
Minos's wife gets with the bull. Oh. But, uh, and then there's like parts where people are going crazy. And so when they're like losing their mind, the text changes shape. It's pretty cool. I really enjoyed it. I it was five the- stars. I finally found, you found your quote. Yeah, the lions, page two thirty three. Um, we hadn't said okay, the word. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Charlie, cover your ears. <laughs> okay, go ahead. The, we hadn't said the word yet. Words had power, just like the words slut, magic, fernwe. They had power. So did the word rape. Mm, yeah. Yeah, that was a good one, too. Okay, let me read Amanda. Okay, I, I totally, like, pronounced it uh, Finway, or Fern, Fernway, Fernway, when I, I was reading. That. I think in my head it was always, like, Fernwe, Fernwa, whatever. We're done, Charlie. Charlie said to wave when, when you're done. <laughs> Um, this is the quote that really got me in this, where is it? It's the other one, not that one. The, this is the poem that really got me. The, maybe I'm not the book you dog ear and keep with you always. The girl murmured, pulling her sleeves over her hands. Maybe I'm the book you forgot. You forget to bookmark and leave on the train, shrieking violets like us. Like, that me me like, I was like, why is this explaining my love life right now? I need you to stop. <laughs> yeah, I was like reading all of those that you were sending me and they were really good. I, I was sending them to Charlie and Nikki and them. <laughs> I see that now. <laughs> Listen, I was in my feels that day. But. So there are still the, the rest of today and all of tomorrow. So are people still trying to get those last minute books in the last little bit read? I'm going to try. I just don't know what I'm going to pick up yet because I was reading Watch Me Disappear by Janelle Brown, which I found at the library with water on the cover. So technically it's a book I've been really wanting to read. Just the one on my shelf has trees instead of water. But I found one with water, and I was like, hey, I can cheat and put it in the readathon. <laughs> but I'm kind of not into a book about a mom disappearing right now for some reason. So I'm like, thriller's going to get set down for <laughs> In time and the mindset for that kind of a trope. I am trying to get through Storm and Fury right now. I'm like right here at this point. So my goal is to finish this. Don't know if I'll read anything else. Maybe, maybe not. I'm, I mean, I've gotten a few graphic novels in. I could read some more graphic novels, possibly. Um, my goal is to try to read one more book, whether it fits our challenges or not. Is which, what book? Is to read one more book. Oh, come on. You can find one that completes a challenge. Because the one that I really want to read is Flawless, and that one fits none of the challenges but Yellow, but Yellow's already covered. <laughs> You're asking if uh, Storm and Fury's good? I'm enjoying it so far. I One thing I didn't realize when I started it, though, on the front here it tells me that um, this is in the world, set in the world of the Dark Elements, which is another series that she did. So, I mean, I haven't read that other series, but it's set in that world. So far, it doesn't seem to be like, I'm not lost because I haven't read that, but it is good. I'm liking it. I would, I think I would fit that in the same kind of category as like, <laughs> the mortal instruments maybe 
Emma, to answer your question, 320 pages. <laughs> so it only fits the yellow challenge because it's set in the United States too, so. But it's book two. To hey, if, it fits the, if it fits the yellow challenge, that works. I but mean, it only has to fit one. But I've already read this one for yellow. <gasps> book one. Okay. okay, so let me tell you about the gargoyles because that was kind of something that I was like, eh. Well, apparently that's that's their... Okay, so they are gargoyles, but apparently they were living creatures all of this time, and that was just like their shape, their form. Um, but they that's them in their real form, but they can actually transform into like a human form, and they're called wardens, and they're like... Um, fight demons it's pretty good why is this sounding like buffy but with gargoyles well our main character okay so humans don't know that demons exist this is, it reminds me more of the mortal instruments okay i could see that um humans don't know demons exist the gargoyles are there um the wardens is what they're called are there to protect um the world from demons and our main character her name is trinity she's something special she's living with this group of wardens and she's posing as human but just a couple of the wardens know what she really is and I'm like almost halfway through and I'm just learning what she is. So I'm not going to say that. Is she a Tessa? Is she Tessa? Or she thinks she's human and then finds out she's not. She doesn't think she's human. She knows she's something else. And she's supposed to like. She's stronger than all of the wardens. She could take down all of the wardens, but they, most of them don't know that they think she's just a human. Interesting. And if her blood is spilled, all of the demons will be coming for her. Like even if a drop, because they'll smell it. Because she's something special. Okay, let's go True Blood real fast. Is it like when, um, is she a Claudine? I, I don't know True Blood. Okay, um... Is she a resand? I don't want to tell you what she is because uh, it would spoil it. So you have to read it. <laughs> but, but, but. Excuse me. But. I'm nosy. Okay. Side note real fast. I went to Goodwill yesterday. I slipped out inside of a Goodwill. I found book 18 to Women's Murder Club by James Patterson, which came out in April for $3.03. And wow, it doesn't that's like pretty it awesome. It opened. And I'm like, what? And I also found one of my favorite romance novels of all time for $3 as well. Cool. And I'm taking a picture of my screen right now because my friend Donna is like, writing me and she's like why aren't you talking to me and i'm like i'm in a live show on youtube right now <laughs> you should just join us in the comments <laughs> i'm just gonna tell her join us in the i know right chat. <laughs> no I'm i have sure an ollie's I'm near me not. like there was one that was like what? I unfortunately don't because Oklahoma hates me. There was one that was like farther away and that I, that's the one I would go to. But now there's one like super, super close. I haven't been to it yet, but yeah, it's like really, really close to me now. <laughs> they won't. Here, I'm going to take a picture of that comment. <laughs> And I'm going to circle it. 
what I need to do is if I can save money, which I looked up how much plane tickets were. I don't know if I can realistically do it anytime soon, but I need to come to England and visit you girls and we all go charity shopping. Like, I want to see y'all's charity shops because I want to know. I do too. What, I want to know what a charity shop is compared to us Americans. Well, we I mean, I imagine that their charity shops. shops are like our thrift shops. But their prices are better than our thrift shops. <laughs> See, I'm going charity shop shopping with Charlie. God, God. Melanie, check it out. Amazing prices on new books. Oh, I have. I've bought lots of books from Ollie's, from the other Ollie's, the one that's farther away. Um, yeah, I, I like Ollie's. <laughs> Charlie's going to go and try to not buy books. Why would you go and try to not buy books? I mean, if you're going to go, you, you know you're going to buy books. <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, I don't I don't tease myself and go into a bookstore going, I'm not going to buy anything while I'm here because I would just be lying to myself. I mean, Emma, if you want to send me a list and if I can find them really cheap, I'll grab them. This makes me feel better. I didn't get to finish either. I finished two. I'm almost finished with one and started summer. So I've been a busy week. Well, Megan, I wonder how, 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 does anybody know how much 20 pence is here? Let me do that math for us. Uh, she said they can get books for like 20 pence. I don't know what that is. Pence. To me, that's like, I, I think of like cents. Mm -hmm. So it's like a quarter. A little less than a quarter. Charlie, send me chocolates. I miss Cadbury's. <laughs> we have Cadbury's here in the U.S. I like Cadbury's. What? Wait, wait. Uh, 10 pence is 14.3 cents. So, yeah, um, it's like a quarter. You can get books for a quarter. I need y'all stores, like, now. Shoot, I'm obsessed with cheap books. <laughs> Listen, we already know this, Miss Book Outlet Queen. <laughs> I'm seriously, um, my my, I really wish that they had a way that I could use all of my points, like use more points at once than they allow me to, because I have a lot of freaking points. I feel like Book Outlet can, just send you books now. I can only use 400 points at a time and I have like 20,000. But like I said, I feel like book outlet should just send you free books to review. <laughs> well, actually Amazon's doing that now. Amazon's sending me free books, which is awesome. You go girl. Hold on. Look. Let me find, let me get what I just got from Wow. Amazon just sent me all of these for free. What the hell? I need your connections. Some of them, some of them have already come out. Actually, most of them have already come out. But they're all like arts except for one. I show them off in the vlog that I'm currently doing. Okay, then, so the one that the minute it posts, I need to stop doing what I'm doing and just watch. Gotcha. Like I always do with your vlogs. But it's, a, it's the one that's currently being filmed. <laughs> like I said, when it posts, just stop what I'm doing and watch it. Let's see. Oh, I got behind on the... Um, okay, girls, because we have nothing but ladies here. Any of y'all have... What is your favorite prompt from the summertime reads that you had the most fun choosing a book for? I think mine was yellow on the cover because I pulled off like 30 books off my shelf and then ended up reading one from the library. But I'm just curious, what's y'all's favorite prompt? And, and free is the best price, I agree. It really is. <laughs> 
I mean, one of these months, I'm going to have to just make an entire, like, TBR of just books that you, Charlie, Nikki, Ginger has all sent me. Oh, my gosh. So, like, it's not just books that Amazon sent me. Like, I get to pick from a whole bunch of stuff. So, I now have, like, a new backdrop. I haven't opened it yet. I've gotten a backdrop to do, like, pictures and stuff with. I've gotten some shoes. i got a badminton set. <laughs> I just have to write a review for it, which is awesome. I like both those prompts too because set in another country you get to be very creative. Because I was sitting there thinking I could pull out any fantasy novel and be like, hey, this one fits for that prompt. Because technically we don't live in Prithia, so hey, I could pull out Akatar. <laughs> Okay, so actually, do y'all have, okay, we were discussing before this readathon, or before this live show started. Yeah. Um, our fall into readingathon, and we thought that we would ask all of you any suggestions you might have on prompts, like naming prompts or, you know, what the challenges are that kind of thing. And we might consider using some of these when we're creating our fall into reading a thon. And I have a pen and paper ready. Oh yeah. I was surprised by how many books had freaking yellow on the cover. Like I have so many, it's insane. See, so do I, but every book I pulled off that had yellow on the cover, I was like, that's not enough yellow. Or I'm just not in the mood for that right now. Because that book sounds horrible. Oh, Emma submitted hers for Bells. For your other readathon. Oh. <laughs> I'm excited. For my Goblet of Fire readathon. Because I'm kind of curious if my prompt will come up for that one too. Because I really thought long and hard and thought Harry Potter related. Like I went I into am <laughs> like there are currently forty um prompts for that, which I'm just so excited for. But we're not talking about Goblet of Fire Readathon, but um if you don't know, go check out my video with the announcement for that and like submit a prompt. Ooh. Yeah. Um Ooh. Uh, we're actually talking about the fall into reading a thon for, for our next season a thon, which is one, you know, that Clint and I will be doing. Yeah, actually, times. we're hoping to have another host with us next time. Uh, she was supposed to be a host this time and she wasn't able to do it. So she said that she wants to for the next one. So hopefully we'll have Cody from Cody's Book Corner as a host for our fall into reading a thon. Which we also have hopefully. some really, really fun things coming up for that one. Do you guys want to know the group book for it ahead of time? So that y'all are able to go ahead and try to get a hold of it for it? Because I'm super excited for this. And Charlie and Emily... Don't worry about getting the book. Y'all will probably receive the book soon anyways. Because it's me we're talking about. <laughs> and your package is going out this week, Mel. Oh. <laughs> because I finally found everything that's supposed to go into it. But. So some, uh, Knight says a, a creepy read. Uh, Megan says a book featuring Thanksgiving slash Halloween prompt. Emily, I really like Emily's. The pick Emily says pick a book that explodes for you. I really like that one. Uh, uh, da, 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 da. Thriller Who Done It prompt. Readathon is good for five to ten books only. Okay, so they all want to know the book. Which I have it in my hands. Drum roll. 
Killing November by Adriana Mather. Which, by the way, the secret kind of goes along with this. Which, do we want to tell for the live show? Yeah, let's go ahead. Okay, for our next live show, when we are discussing the readathon and discussing the group book, we are going to have a very special guest with us for that live show. And Clint, you can tell who that guest is going to be. Adriana Mather will be joining us and answering any questions you have about this book or her two previous books, which let me grab those. Yay! Which... By the way, Mel doesn't know this part, but I have a copy of How to Hang a Witch and Haunting the Deep, both in hardback, in good enough condition. So for those that want to join us at the live show, I will be doing a giveaway of her debut series. Woo! That's awesome. That's all I can do, but so you might want to come join us. Because witches, witches, and then in any ways, technically Killing November is my favorite. Like, this is a better written book, but How to Hang a Witch still has my heart. And y'all want to know what the book's about? Tell us, I tell it. us. I'll read the synopsis. It says, November is as good as dead. She just doesn't know it yet. At the, at the International Academy Abskindati, I think that's how that's pronounced, there's no electricity, no internet, and an archaic eye-for-an-eye eye punishment system. Classes range from knife throwing and poison to art of deception, and the students, all silver spoon descendants of the world's most elite strategists, training to become assassins, spies, and master impersonators. One is a virtuoso of accents and never to be trusted. Another is a vicious fighter determined to exploit November's weaknesses. And then there's the boy with the mesmerizing eyes and a secret agenda. November doesn't know how an ordinary girl like her fits into the school's complicated legacy. But when a student is murdered, She'll need to separate her enemies from her allies before the crime gets pinned on her. Or she becomes the killer's next victim. So basically, school in the woods set for spies. And I will state Is one that? little thing. And I will state one little thing. Don't trust anyone. That's all I'm going to say. Is the book literally starts off saying, don't trust anyone. And they mean, don't trust anyone. I think that is the perfect fall kind of book. For one, I mean, it's got the month of November in it. Two, it's like kind of spooky. It's not like overly spooky, but kind of spooky, mystery. I mean, I think that's like the perfect book for the fall into readathon group book. And, and I'm so, done it. and I am so it freaking cool. excited that she's going to be joining us. That's really, really cool. And actually all the people on the cover are some of the main characters and they are described to look like this as well, because there's also a, um, on YouTube, they have book trailers for how to hang a witch haunting the deep and Killing November because Adriana and her husband are movie producers. So when they make a book trailer, they make like a movie trailer for a book. I will state How to Hang a Witch is still the best one they've done so far. But, but yeah. I'll have to go look up those and, book trailers. They're really good. And the, and if they ever make a show, I kind of want the people that they get to play the parts in the trailers to play the characters. Well, maybe not the girl in Killing Novembers, because I don't 100% see her as that. But Megan says we could do another color prompt like red or orange. 
What color did we use last year for our fall one? Red, orange, or yellow on the cover. Oh, yeah. You want to know, do y'all want a refresher of last year's prompts? Because I have them in front of me. Because my book binder is amazing. <laughs> You're so organized. I love that about you. <laughs> I'm very OCD. Um, I'm very OCD, but not with things like that. Like, I, I, if y'all don't know, I, I write Clint and I'm like, can you please send me yet another picture of our prompts? Because <laughs> I will forget. Even on a regular basis, after I have filmed the announcement, I have to go back and look at my um, descri like, um, description section of my video to remind myself what the prompts are. Oh my because god! Because I can't remember. I my memory is just terrible. Oh my god, Emma, that is the perfect prompt. Instead of color on the cover, read a book that's predominantly black on the cover. Mm. Black might be a good prompt. I might. I think Clint might struggle with that one. <laughs> just looking at my shelves, I might. But no, the prompts we had last year were schools in session, read the group book or buddy read a book which last year's group book was the Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman. Oh, the Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman, yep. Yeah. Then we had The Leaves Are Falling, read a book with orange, red, or yellow on the cover or any variation of such. Then we had I Want S'mores, read an ooey-gooey romance. Then we had my favorite prompt, which I'm sorry, we'll be saying because it's the, the funnest one. Pumpkin spice latte and apple picking. Read a book with fruit or beverage on the cover or in its name. Because that was the most creative one that we have ever came up with. <laughs> we had trick or treat read a spooky novel, which we might change a few of these around. Because technically, if we were to keep those... Right now, Killing November would settle for The Leaves Are Falling, because Red's on the cover, Group Book, and Trick or Treat. Because it's kind of a spookier kind of vibe. Mm. No, I think we'll change some things up. Like, I, I don't want to keep it exactly the same. We may have some that are still the same, like Pumpkin Spice Latte one. Yeah, that, I, I'm not budging on that one. That one's staying. <laughs> <laughs> favorite because you could pull off a like I have a book over here that has vials of potions on the cover that's considered a beverage the fall into reading a thon will be September 23rd through the 29th I had to like look up on my calendar to see the exact date but the first day of fall is September 23rd which is a Monday and so it will be a seven day a one week read a thon so, so September 23rd through 29th 23rd. How about we just do 23rd through the 30th? Because there's only one other day left in that month. Well, the 30th would fall on a Monday. Plus, a lot of people oh, true. would want to like do wrap-ups and stuff at that point. So, it'll be easy. I think, I think our, our fall into reading a thon and our spring into reading a thon are seven-day read-a-thons. And our We're thinking our summertime, summertime and wintertime will be 10 day readathons. Oh, also for our fall into reading a thon, last year we did how many prompts? Five? Five. Oh, but then we did six for spring, correct? Yes. Yes. So, how many prompts would y'all like to have for a seven day readathon? Would you like five, for six, summer. or seven? And for summer, we did five. So we could do five for our summer and winter and then do six for fall and spring. Charlie says she can't wait for the Christmas one. So, yeah, we want to know. Taking a vote right now. Okay, they, they're... Five. Saying five. Everybody's saying five. So we'll just... <laughs> Except for Nightmare. Nightmare says seven, but she's insane. <laughs> oh, crap. I okay. The wrong one. <laughs> so we can, we can do a five again. Do um, want, okay, hold and... on. Do you guys want five prompts and then the group book prompt? 
or do you want the group book prompt part of the five points? Good question. Because I know there's readathons that have the six prompts because the sixth one is the group book. But then again, the group book can complete other challenges. And we don't mind if you read one book. If the one book can cover all the challenges, go right ahead and have fun. If that's the book you want to read. True. Like, for, I mean, like Summer of Salt for me covered three prompts. For me, Summer of Salt could have covered four. Because it has yellow on the cover, too. I'm aiming for more books for the autumn one. You can bonus prompts. Five and the group, group book separate. Five, it's my first readathon with you guys. Hi, Nitra. Hi. I see one that says five, including the group book. Well, we could always, once we get together and actually start planning this, we can sit down and figure out what prompts we do come up with. I will say, yeah. do you really like <laughs> That's true, because if, if we get stuck and we're like, okay, well, we have four prompts and the group pick, that might be it. But if we can think of five really good prompts and the group pick, we and might not have to do, And not have to do the same exact ones as last year, because I do like the idea of every year changing them up a little bit as we get better at doing Agreed. I also love that we're getting y'all's input because yes. it's for y'all. So, I mean, it's for us too. We have a lot of fun doing it. Not many but it's more for y'all. Not many readathon people take people's thoughts into consideration. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I like to, uh, ha having just started this uh, Goblet of Fire readathon that I have going on. I'm so loving the idea of getting other people's ideas for these prompts because it's just so much fun, like seeing what people come up with. Like, oh my gosh, I love, like I've, I've sat and read every single prompt that people have come up with for this Goblet of Fire readathon and I'm loving it. Like, there's some really good ones. I haven't seen any that I'm just like, that's a terrible prompt. They're all really good. With the Goblet of Fire readathon, if any prompts come up, like, that don't actually come up for you guys to do the Goblet of Fire, and you think that it might fit for us for fall, we could possibly do that and give credit to the person who came up with the prompt. True. As in, like, an added, like, this one was too good not to use, you know? Yeah. Uh, there's quite a few that are saying a witchy prompt would be a good prompt. We'll have to come up with a cute name. Um, also, with Emily's prompt of a book exploding, for us, I think would fit better for next year's Summerathon to fit a July 4th theme. Yes. Mm -hmm. A book that sends fireworks through your veins. I have a prompt for us. Double, okay. double, toil and trouble, read a witchy book. It's double, double, toil and trouble, fire burn and cauldron bubble. Okay, that's hold too on. long, though. <laughs> well, hold on. I have, I have the full thing. Hold on. It's Round about the cauldron go, in the poison, intros throw, days and nights at 31, sweltered venom, sleeping got, boils, eye the charmed pot, double, double, toil and trouble, fire burning, cauldron bubble. Sorry. You said okay. the, <laughs> the full route. It's Macbeth. It's my favorite scene of Macbeth. Okay, so that I think that might be a little bit too long. But <laughs> like double, double, toil and trouble. Double, double, toil and trouble, read a witchy book. See, now y'all have like a sneak peek on one of our prompts. And I'm writing it down. Double, double, toil and trouble. This is totally how we end up like coming up with our prompts too. We just, yeah, we do this. <laughs> just brainstorming. 
which this year is a really good year to do a witch <laughs> prompt to with the amount of Emma, witch books. Emma says, Clint, that was like a book version of Rap God. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> I can't not do it when someone says part of the quote, I tend to just ramble off the whole quote. Dude, that is like, <laughs> okay, I, I have one um, weird thing like that that I also have memorized, but it's, it's the old English version of the prelude of the Canterbury Tales. Hold on. <laughs> What are you doing? <laughs> Do you have the old English version in the front? Well, it has on one side the old English and because you have old English and then translated. <laughs> you said the, the prologue? Yeah. So here, here beginneth the book of the Tales of Canterbury. Yep. When the April... Uh, here beginneth the book of the Tales of Canterbury. One that opera with a shorter sota, the root of March had perished to the rota, and bother be vain and swish to the core, of which were two engendered the floor. On safe for sake of the sweet of breath, and spirit hath in every halt and hate. The tin and the crabbies and the youngest sona, hath in the ram is harvey costarona. And to translate... <laughs> <laughs> for those who don't know what she just said is hold on you went to the that was just a part of it <laughs> to the breath um here begins the book of the canterbury tells when april with its sweet showers has pierced the drop of march to root and bay and bathed every vein in such moisture as has power to bring forth the flower when also zephyrus is with his sweet breath yeah. <laughs> this used to be my mother's. This is a really old copy too. Because it was my grandfather before. This is I had to memorize that in high school and say it in front of like class. Actually I had to memorize the whole thing in an old English. This is from nineteen ninety, so this book is almost twenty nine years old. Same age as me. I did not realize it was nineteen ninety. And it was my grandfather's because you can see his name right here. But <laughs> we <laughs> snatched. Yes. Yes, Harry Potter would count for a witchy read. It, yeah, absolutely. Which I used to have the entire Sorting Hat song memorized because there's so many of them. The first one. <laughs> Because back in acting class, we had to choose a random non-human character to do a monologue of. And I chose the sorting hat. And I sat on a table like this. I did this little thing. And I just did the whole entire monologue of his song. And then people would come and sit in the chair in front of me. Because they thought it was hilarious. They would sit in the chair front of me so I would take my thing and go like this around their head and I'd go Hufflepuff Gryffindor <laughs> it was funny <laughs> that sounds fun but yes wow we've been at this for an hour now actually it feels like we've, we've been talking for so much longer this is probably one of the shorter live shows we've had <laughs> so far yeah but now um so far, I'm going to ask everyone in the comments, and Melanie herself too, what is the best book you've read this year? We already, already know my answer, which is Fall's group book, but hey. On brand. <laughs> I'm trying to think, what have I read this year? I can't remember past this week at this point. I don't know. This year's been insane. Hi, Emily. <laughs> oh my God. Her mouth is dry from all the chatting. You mean this, Megan? Boy swallows universe. 
Bye, Emily. And I have that look on a list, Charlie, because of you. And the fact that your hair matches the book cover is like perfection of my eyes. Oh, I read The Fall in Our Stars this year. Oh, and yes, Turtles All the Way Down, Emily. Because that book, that buddy read of all of us was off the hook. Yeah. I, re I read The Fault in Our Stars this year. That was a really good one. I don't know. One of my favorite books now is, is Bull. I mean, I freaking love this book. In all of its ridiculousness. Okay, there's like... The, they okay. Minos's wife asks this um, Icarus's dad to build her a big wooden cow that she could climb inside to fool the bull, so that she can be with the bull. <laughs> Don't you just love Greek mythology? <laughs> It's ridiculous. <laughs> Bye, Em. I'm going to have to go soon, too, and talk to my hubby. Bull sounds fab. Yeah, I, I had to look because I was just like, I I've got to read more books by him. And there's another one called Voices, I believe. And it's uh, Joan of Arc. And it's supposed to also be written in, like, poem form. And I'm going to have to read that next because if it's anything like that i'm going to freaking love it the also like those um uh, do you remember when i would read those like, the text versions of like romeo and juliet and the yeah. midsummer's night and all of that it gives me that the same kind of vibes as those but better i think you've got me wanting to read it so i'm now looking up on my library to see if I can put it on hold. Into the Drowning Deep is queer, has deaf twins, and has killer mermaids. Cool. And I just placed bull on hold. Yay! So I You're will gonna be like it. that really soon because that just sounds hilarious. Yes. And I did not know into the Drowning Deep was queer. I knew it was about killer mermaids coming out of the Mariana Trench, whatever the deepest part of the ocean. Mm -hmm. I know Julie from Pages and Pens was so freaked out by that. But it's oh. that I may have to read it. Okay, so what is... Okay, so you asked favorite book of the year so far. What is everybody's book that they're most looking forward to reading in the rest of this year? Like one book that you really want to read this year. Riley Sager's newest book, which is coming to me from Book of the Month, because Book of the Month emailed me and said what the next book picks were, and the newest Riley Sager's on its way to my house right now, and I can't wait. Because I'm. What's it called? Friend. Uh, every locked door. Oh yeah, they were they had that at um, BEA and BookCon. I didn't get it though. And I'm also looking forward to the sequel to Hot and Badgered, which comes out in September, I think, or is it November? I have my pre-order list. In a Badger Way by Shelley Lorenzen, November 28th. Because Honey Badger Shapeshifters and Romance and lots and lots of screwing and it's really hot and I love it. <laughs> Let's see, what we, Stephen King's newest, which comes out the day before my birthday. When's your birthday? Uh, Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. Oh my gosh, that was awesome at BEA and BookCon and people went stupid over that. Um, I didn't. <laughs> I was like, I've got it pre-ordered. I don't need to do all that. Did you um, see Books and Lala's latest, like her buzzwordathon vlog, where she received? She got it, it. and she looked yeah. like in tears. Yeah, so excited. 
Um, I had a book recently, like yesterday, I think it was, came in the mail that I'm really looking forward to reading. It's The Escape Room by Megan Golden. I've heard about that one. That one's so good. It comes out, it says on here August 6th, but apparently it actually comes out on July 30th. And, I mean, it looks really creepy, like, the eyeball looking through. Also, 45. Girl, you do not look 45. September 11th. Marty's birthday is September 10th, the day before yours. Which, night fear, you should join me in some another project because your birthday falls in the middle of my other project that comes out in September. Keep an eye out. Because it's till the 15th, I do believe. Can I read an excerpt from the from Escape Room? I don't. I wouldn't know what to read because I haven't read it yet. Like I, it literally just came in the mail yesterday. I'm, the first I'm gonna make it part of my um, uh, the reading rush TBR. Which I I still don't know if I want to do reading rush or not because I've decided. I'm not going to be doing the book junkie trials like I wanted to. I've been doing too much lately, and I need to slow down. And I kind of would rather do Step Right Up a Thon with Nikki from our Read Past My Bedtime. I'd rather do her read a thon because she's so supportive of ours. I want to be supportive of hers. I have my Reading Rush bookmarks, and I have my Reading Rush mug somewhere. Because I did their whole like um, Indiegogo thing to help start their channel, like start their uh, website and all of that. So I'm like, I kind of do it. <laughs> <laughs> and then August, I'm doing your readathon and I'm doing um, the newts. And I'm going to yeah. mesh them together. Yeah, well, I think I figure my uh, Goblet of Fire readathon will go along well with the newts. Mm -hmm. It's during it's one week of the newts. It's Harry Potter themed, and I mean, I'm sure that the challenges will end up matching up with challenges in the newts. So it's gonna I, it'll go well, I think. I'm just limited on. If y'all don't know about my uh, Goblet of Fire readathon, make sure you go check out that video for sure. It's fun. Bye, Emma. Bye. PBR for reading lunch is the definite fulfillment. August is saved for newts. I have to save for newts, but because you're doing one, I'm going to try to get books to coincide. But I only can do certain categories because I didn't read all the L's like I was supposed to because life happened and I moved. <laughs> So well, I only accomplished the, potions, defense against the dark arts, herbology, care of magical creatures, arthrismacy, transfiguration, muggle studies, and charms. No. Yes. But yeah, the um, the Goblet of Fire readathon it takes place like it said just one week in August. And it is Harry Potter themed and will go along with the stuff from Newt. So they can be done kind of simultaneously. Like books read for my readathon will also count for the Newt. And mm -hmm. books read for Newt's can, I'm sure, complete one of the challenges for the Goblet of Fire readathon. Like I know I need to read seven books to become a Hogwarts professor of potions. That's all that matters. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly don't remember what all I completed. I completed a lot, if not all of them. I think I have to actually go back and look because I can't. It's like one or two prompts. But I can't remember. <laughs> but then I, <laughs> I have to go back and see. <laughs> but life happened to both of us during that time period. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Life. 
She read, so you she's determined sometimes. To <laughs> you want to read 36 books? If I'm doing my math correctly in one month. I think that's right. 30, yeah, I think that's right, 36. Because I think there's 12 out. different ones and then three prompts for each. So 36. Because I have to get an O in Potion, so I've got to read three books for Potions. An E in Defense Against the Dark Arts, so I've got to read two. And then an A in a secondary subject and an A in a secondary subject. So just two extra books. Bye, Charlie. Bye. Thank you for participating. Yes, thank you. Okay, well, I think we're getting like way off topic of our readathon. <laughs> <laughs> we both do have new readathons coming up, separate from the seasonathon. So you'll have to check those out on our individual channels. And um, yeah, come around the end of August. Somewhere around the end of August, beginning of September time, we will have our announcement video for the fall into reading a thon with all of the announcements or all of the prompts for that. Mm -hmm. And our host, we should know for sure if Cody is going to be joining us as a host. Hopefully, fingers crossed, she'll be able to this time. And, and we have more of a scheduled thing down for our Twitter account on when we're doing reading sprints and stuff like that ahead of time. That way you guys know ahead of time if you can join us or not. Instead of us just doing impromptu, like four different ones in one day because we're bored. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. It, for me, not. that works well just because I can, I mean, life. <laughs> I mean, we and, might have more of a schedule down of Who's controlling Twitter each day? Or for from this time to this time, so yeah. and so controls the Twitter. That way it's like not like so sporadic and y'all don't know which one of us you're talking to. <laughs> yeah, I tried to include completely Melanie at the end of each like thing I did. By the way, I'm gonna run reading sprints tomorrow because I'm off all day tomorrow. So I figured I could do some reading sprints on the final day. And That's good like, because I'll be working at my other house tomorrow. So I figured we could like knock out a book or two on that final day, get all that last challenge you need completed. I'm going to try to knock out this book and maybe I might possibly throw in like my Buffy graphic novel. Because it's got yellow on the cover. I'm shocked that I haven't <laughs> read that yet. I would have, if I were you, I would have read that like on the plane, or I would have read the minute got to the house. Or I was trying to wait to read any of those like graphic novels until I um until my video posted with my graphic novel haul. Well, now you can read them, so read all of them because I need your opinion <laughs> of that one before I order it. Oh my gosh, speaking of ordering graphic novels, I just ordered one yesterday or earlier today. See, my memory is terrible. But it's a pre-order and it comes out on the 2nd. Guys, it's Rainbow Bright. What? Yeah. <laughs> There's a Rainbow Bright graphic novel. Like, what? What? And it's like how Rainbow Bright became Rainbow Bright, if, if I gather. And yeah, I have to have that in my life because I actually have all of the Rainbow Bright movies. <laughs> I'm not in my life because it's Rainbow Bright and Rainbow Bright's amazing. I love it. Uh, yeah, I, I ordered it. So it'll be here on July 2nd. Yeah, I'm a big kid. I grew up with Rainbow Bright. I mean, I had everything Rainbow Bright. Mm -hmm. I had all of the little sprites. I had Rainbow Bright bedding, Rainbow Bright pillows. I had Rainbow Bright, Bright curtains. I had, like, the Rainbow Bright doll and um, her horse and all the different little sprites and several of the other Rainbow Bright characters. Yeah. 
I had a lot. I really can't <laughs> say anything, Night Fear. I read 29 books so far this month, so... But 23 of them were mangas part of the otaku a so... But I did... This is my largest reading month so far this year. <laughs> I read a variety, like, a range. Like, I have read as many as... I want to say I read like 32 books one month and that was that was in February in a February <laughs> which is the shortest month I read like 32 books that month because I was doing so many different readathons I was like burnt out after that but then there's some months that I might read like four <laughs> Also, side note, guys, if y'all have not read Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuestin, go get it. Go read it. Go read it now. It's like the best thing you'll ever read. In this climate we have in the United States, being as shitty as it is, you need a book that's going to give you a warm hug and help your feelings. Just going to throw that out there. But that's beside the point. Yeah, I, 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 I enjoyed Red, White, and Royal Blue. And Internment. I really enjoyed Internment. I'm scared to pick up internment because I know you've sent me the copy and it's sitting on my shelf, but I'm scared to pick it up because I know how realistic it's going to be and it's, I'm going to be bawling my eyes out and I'm just like, am I prepared? It's crazy. It's crazy realistic. Like when you first start reading it, you're, it's like you're reading about something that's happening in another country and then just by the second page, you're like, oh, my God, this is here. And, and like, everything's set here in the U.S. And, oh, oh, it's so good. Yeah. I, I tell everybody I was hooked by page two. That, that's a book that I'm making sure I read by the end of the year. It's, like, one of those books that I'm, like, I'm going to force myself to read it. Because I know if I don't force myself, it'll never get read. Because I'm Read gonna, it. Because it's such... Ugh. And I have a project coming up where I might be using a package I got for my birthday early from a certain rainbowed haired girl. So, well, not quite. I, sent, I sent him a lot of books for his birthday. <laughs> Which I'm trying to throw into readathons. <laughs> I know I'm doing Heartless for Step Up, Step Right Up a thon because I'm funny. Oh, I love that book so much. I'm buddy reading that with Emily, and I think Simone might be joining us. I'm not 100%. I think that was actually a book that I read this year, if, I want, if, if I'm remembering correctly. And if that's the case, that might be one of my like, top books that I read this year, because I freaking love Heartless so much. Hell, one of the books you sent, the one that you sent that happened to ha I actually happened to own, the... It should be right here. My fantasy of Where is it? Yeah, I sent him a box full of books on Book Outlet. They were all like four or five star books for me. Oh, it's behind here. Um, Shadow Bright and Burning. Oh, that was really freaking, good. Uh, freaking my roommate saw it and she's just like, can I read this? I was like, here, you read it. I've got this copy. We'll both read it. Okay, cool. <laughs> we're going to read that soon. And then I know Scythe will be on one list somewhere, sometime. I've got to find all the books now that I've moved my books around. Ugh. I have a Tigger. He's decided he's going to join me in my lap. Bye. Aww. <laughs> Aww. Aww. Oh, he's a big, Ow. big kitty. Oh my goodness. I didn't even realize that right beside my head is in turn pit. Read is, it. Which is next to Scythe and Pure. Because it's all Oh my, my gosh. Those shelf. are both so good. Because they're on my dystopian shelf. Because sci-fi dystopian esque because I don't have a lot of those. Pure is a book that I read a long time ago and absolutely loved it. It's um a trilogy. I have the rest of the trilogy too. Tigger's a sweet boy. <laughs> um, 
But there's like, oh my gosh, yes, I'm so waiting for Toll. I can't wait for that book. Um, in Pure, there's like, the world's pretty much been ended by like nuclear war. And, and then there's like, yeah. And there's these domes set up where people were put in to like keep the world like keep the population alive and all of that. And those are called pures. They haven't been affected by the nuclear fallout or whatever. And they're living in these domes and they're free from every, you know, all the radiation and all that stuff. And it's like great minds and all of that. And, um, the, but there are people on the outside that have managed to survive it as well. And, those people, most of them are like um, deformed in different ways. Like our main character, she has a doll. I think, I think it was like a doll fused to her arm. Like her her arm and the doll are one. Like her arm is a doll, and there there's like somebody that's fused into a wall, and they can't go anywhere. There are people that are fused together. Um, so fucked up and I'm kind of here for it. Yeah. And then there's like somebody that's on the inside of the dome and he's like something's not right with what's going on. There's some shady stuff going on in the inside the dome and he doesn't believe his father and his father is like the head of it. And um, so he's planning on escaping the dome and to see what's out on the outside or whatever. And then the people on the outside, they really don't like the, the peers that are on the inside of the dome because they won't let any of these other people in and won't let, you know, so all these other people are like struggling for food and water and air and all this other stuff. And they've got, you know, this utopia and um, they're also like recruiting these people to fight some kind of war or, or something and they don't want to. And so now they're like going to go up against the dome. So it's like a, they're, they're going, you're planning a battle against the dome. And then the dome is also trying to annihilate the people on the outside. Oh, this is pretty much Stephen King meets um, Divergent. Under the Dome meets Divergent is kind of what I was looking mm -hmm. for. It's really good. Which, speaking it's of dystopians, who here is excited for the new Hunger Games book that's coming out? What? Suzanne Collins announced a prequel novel coming out in 2020. Huh. It's going to be the first the the one with the first um, rev revolution not revolution that's not the word the first rise up that they had in their society since they started doing it which is oh. Mag's time in Hunger Games when Mag's wins the old lady that dies in Hunger Games at the beginning mm -hmm. by saving them in the second one. But, like, we're getting new Hunger Games stuff, and I'm all here for it. Like, I'm here for it. I need it. I, want, I wonder if they'll do another movie. Who knows? And if it's set in the time period that she says it's possibly set in, like, I need to see Mags win the Hunger Games, because I want to know how that happens. I would love to see a backstory for each of the winners, truthfully, mm -hmm. especially Finn. I just need more Finn in my life. <laughs> I'm all about that sea man. But all right, well, I think we could probably end this here, just because we've gone so far off anything related to this readathon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's let's hold on before we leave. Let's jump back to our readathons real quick because 
what part of summertime reads did you find the most difficult so that maybe next year we could better fit our readathon for you guys like i asked what was your favorite prompt what part of the readathon did you like the least and oh my god, Night Fear, I know. I'm already in tears on the inside, but that's besides the point. We're not talking about Finn right now. Back to the readathon. <laughs> or I will. <laughs> but yeah, is there anything that you guys would like to see changed in the summertime reads? Or for those of you who have seen fall, in, fall into reading a thon, anything you would like to see changed that we could make better for you guys? Because this our readathons literally are for you guys, and it's to help remind people the joy of reading. Because I think our readathons need more cats. Oh my god! For winter, <laughs> for the winter thought time readathon, can we read a book that either involves a cat or a cat on the cover? Because you're snowed in, and you're gonna be snuggling up with your pets. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, does, what does Tigger say? Nothing. Uh, he says nothing. Because <laughs> he's a cat. Well, <laughs> I was thinking Tigger from Winnie the Pooh. I was trying to think of his main thing where he bounces on his tail and runs away. He's bouncy, flouncy, pouncy. Fun, 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 fun. But the most wonderful thing about Tiggers is I'm the only one. No, I'm the only one. <laughs> there was two summer readathons going on at the same time, and stupid me had to participate. Other than that, I loved it. <laughs> Truth be stating, I just want to point this out to everyone. Not being shady when I say this, but we had our summer readathon planned in our live show of spring. Yeah. We're dates planned during the I was lunch. so, I have to say, I was so, mm, like, freaking out. Like, I wrote Clint freaking out when, when they posted their announcements for the Summerathon. Listen, we almost quit this readathon, I don't know how many times, because between summer <laughs> Summerathon and the Witchathon taking Summer of Salt, like, listen... Yeah, we 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 really almost did not have this readathon. <laughs> we were, he was freaking out about Witchathon. I freaked out about Summerathon because literally it was like their announcement came up like a day or two two days. I think it was two days before our announcement went up. I was just like, Ugh. I hope it doesn't sound like we're copying them because we're not. We're the ones who started off doing this seasonal. Read a thon. So I focused on this read a thon. Yeah. I'll give you my cat. He's a pain in the. <laughs> oh, I think you're supposed to say he's the same color as yours. But. Well, I'm glad you all participated in ours. Yes, thank you. Whether you got to read the group book or not, I know. Um, the group book for fall might be a little hard to get, but at the same time, it shouldn't. I know quite a few read it, like libraries and stuff that have it. Because I am part of an online group on Facebook. The the fam, as we call ourselves, the family, the fam, fans of Adriana Mather books, where we are sitting there trying to, we come up with ideas and stuff on how best to help you guys get make sure you guys have opportunities to read these amazing books because there's other places we come up with so many different things because we want to hype these books up because they're really really good and they have changed my life and adriana is like the sweetest person in the world and i can't wait for you all to meet her in our live show and i can't wait for mel i'm so excited that she's going to be in the live show because adriana is like a precious little cinnamon roll that I just want to hug and love forever. <laughs> Nightfear says that she's glad we didn't change because she'll participate in ours no matter what. 
Thank you. Uh, well, thank you. Oh, and by the way, Night Fear, the audiobook for for Killing November. I bought the audiobook because my book was packed away when I went to go meet her for the second time to go get this sign for this event. I listened to it on the plane there and on the way home because I just needed comfort. So I've already read this book already like five times, but that's besides the point. Um, so how was the audiobook? Narrator good? It's amazing. I wish it was her that audioed it because she does the audiobook for How to Hang a Witch and you actually get to hear her voice. But they ended up hiring someone to do Haunting the Deep and then someone different to do Killing November. Not by her choice. But the audio I, I think it would be cool to be an audiobook narrator. I know, right? I want to be an audiobook narrator. <laughs> I mean, next year, I kind of don't want to change the dates, but if it works out better to do it without having the first day of summer in it so that more people can participate, we might be able to do that. Well, maybe. I'm going to write Amy, and I'm going to ask her if maybe they would consider not being on the first day of summer. Maybe I can convince them because it's summer a thon and it's not like, you know, well, all of our season a thons are on the first day of the season. Or, maybe they'll move it to like the 4th of July time or something. Or we might come up with other options like turning it into a month long read a thon and having the live show on the first day of summer. That way people are still able to participate and we're not like too badly overlapping witch-a-thon or summer-a-thon. And people are able to do the other read-a-thons they want to do too. Because okay. Would be the only one that we could. What do y'all what do y'all think of a month-long read-a-thon? Would y'all prefer a 10-day or a month-long? And truth be told, when we said the 10-day, everyone was wrapping up their summer thon, and I was like, oh, yeah, summertime reads is done. I was like, no, it's not. Wait, hold on. We have three more days. My bad. <laughs> I was like, wait, we haven't had a live show yet. My bad. People love okay. prom. We would have to come up with a lot more prompts if we did a month-long I would say if we're going to do a month long, we're going to come up with like 15 prompts. Or we could, I don't want to say copy, but we could emulate the Owls Readathon and we could do 12 prompts. That way people aren't overwhelmed and have to read 15 books. Because there's people who think that they have to read a book for every last prompt. Well, we make it, we tell over and over again that you don't have to read a book for every prompt. Uh, you can if you want. But I do know people love that. Sorry, I was reading what Books and Cars wrote. Yeah, so was I. Um. <laughs> so at the same time, or we could do a month long readathon, but be very creative with it, and we could do half in June, half in July. I don't know. No, that's too complicated. Never mind. That gets way too complicated. Okay, question for you guys Would you want a month long in December as well? Because or a 10-day in December. Because if we did do a month-long in December, that would make it easier for people because of Tis the Season of Fun and, like, the 12 other Christmas free to thons that are going on in December. Because a, a if it was going to be a 10-day, we were going to do it on, on the first, starting on the first day 
of winter, which is December 21st, and it would go until December 31st. Mm-hmm. But if y'all would rather have a month long, we could do that. Because there are going to be like 50 readathons probably during December. <laughs> and for those of you, because I know everyone has different faiths, we're not going to make one specifically read a Christmas book. We're going to make it all inclusive for everyone. We'll make a prompt oh, yeah. to read a book that represents the holiday you want to read, whether you want to read a Christmas book or read a book with Ju- about uh, Hanukkah. There we go. I couldn't think of the word. Or Kwanzaa or Yule or I'm pretty sure there's another one I'm missing out of my head, but Yeah, we can make a prompt that's like happy holidays. Yes. And it could be And if you wanna and any. if you wanna read a book that involves New Year's Eve because you're not religious and your religion is New Year's Eve, then that would fit for that prompt too. But that way it's more inclusive and we don't feel like we're I don't like the idea of leaving anyone out. So when I saw like Tis the Season a Thon and a few of the others come out where it's purely you have to read a Christmas themed book, I felt like some people might not want to take part. Books and Cars says, I would first try and keep everything like it is and see if the other person can change since y'all do this like every season. That's what I was thinking. I was thinking, see if they consider moving theirs to like fourth of july time or something like that you know the beginning of july and we take but isn't there the problem of beginning of july isn't that reading rush no reading rush is at the end of july oh july 22nd through 28th or something well i know rachel marie has stated that she's going to have her book her book junkie trials every year which is a full month long in july and it starts at the beginning yeah, but that's a month long. True. And my only issue, the reason why I can't do book junkie trials is this whole if say these are the four books on my TBR plus the group book, if I say that in my TBR, I have to read every book. Does that make sense? I totally and, change up mine. I, I and, try, I some, I kind of sort of try to stick to my TBR, but, and then I did, like with this, I read the first two books were in my original TBR, and then, yeah, after that, I kind of went, veered off, and I ended up reading one other book that was in my original TBR, but everything else I've read was not in my original TBR at all. See, Megan, the issue with ending on the day the season changes is the fact that we also have Witchathon as well, which likes to include the the holiday itself that she celebrates, and that usually ends on the day that we start ours. <laughs> I'm so glad that you're participating in ours, no matter what. Yay! <laughs> well, thank you, Megan. And like I said, we we hold no hard feelings towards anyone when we're saying this. We're just trying to make it easier for you guys to be able to participate in us and participate in theirs at the same time, if you want to do that. Is why I brought that up, because I just wanted to see what y'all, y'all's thoughts were if we changed it up just a tad to be more inclusive of everybody, because I'm that type of person. And I want everyone to be able to do everything that they want to do and not feel like they're stressed out. Well, I'm glad that we, we got to uh, be your first. Well. <laughs> we both did the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> and this I think is that's, that's like, that's like the, the, the pose now. <laughs> And this is why we're the new Julie and Chelsea. But <laughs> we need a Natasha. 
We have Zoe. <laughs> Zoe's our Natasha. Because <laughs> we need a Canadian. And oh, Zoe. I was gonna say, well, maybe maybe Cody will be our Natasha. Oh well, there's that. Because they have contemporary thon, and if Cody ends up joining us and wants to join us for all of them, she could be our Natasha. Then we'll just need a Mel. We just need one more because they have Mel to the any now. Oh, well, I mean, you already have Melanie. <laughs> True. <laughs> but there, in there, there's, there's, there's two Melanies. <laughs> in this sense, you're Julie. Oh, <laughs> Megan says, love, love, love them so much, Emma. I knew Melanie before. Now Clint has me as a follower. Oh, see. And Mike throws a Mel as well. <laughs> there's a lot of Mel's, but there's only one Clint that I know of. There may be a lot of Mel's, but there's only one me. Yes. <laughs> but I also, on a side note, because I did post this on Twitter, but I thought it was hilarious the day that I figured it out that we have Spencer from Common Spence in um, Kansas. You have me in Oklahoma, and then you have Rhiannon from Coffee Book. No. I can't oh think of it. But <laughs> Rhiannon from uh, who does the Witchathon read down in Texas, and it's just like the straight down the Bible Belt are three of the gayest booktubers. I just thought it was hilarious. <laughs> if y'all don't know, I have four cats. I had five. But I have four now. Um, hugs. And hugs. do it. Sending lots of hugs through the camera. And uh, I'm allergic to cats, like really, really, really allergic to cats. <laughs> <laughs> I love Emma's response. You're doing ASMR with the lip roller. <laughs> the lip roller. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Nitra. Yeah, um, it sucks, but. But yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I'm like seriously allergic to cats, but I'm such a sucker for them. And um, I'm taking like so many allergies, like I have to take allergy pills and stuff. Yes, I am allergic. <laughs> my, my, um, my allergy doctor told me, he's like, I'm not telling you to get rid of your cats, but I am suggesting that you don't get more. <laughs> As these go away, don't get more. So, and um, I, I've, I've, well, church was adopted since then. Katniss has been adopted since then. <laughs> I have a problem. They're just so cute and soft and fluffy, and I love them. And if they make me sneeze and my nose get all stuffed up all the time, well. It's the price I have to pay for their cute little cuddly love. Oh gosh, no. Zyrtec, yeah. It doesn't do anything to help. Doesn't do anything. Nothing else. helps. <laughs> the only thing that has ever worked with me is Claritin D, but that barely works nowadays. But no, side note, does my Question, does my um, fabric thing that's over the window, does it look purple right now? Yeah. Because I noticed on the camera when I glanced down, it was just like a lot of purple in the background. And I'm like, it's not purple. It's the light shining through the window because I have it covering the window. And I'm like, is it purple? It's not purple when I'm looking at it. <laughs> Come on, lighting. Okay. Yeah, I noticed that when we first started the video, I was like, it took me a second because I thought, I was like, oh, your books are purple. Why are you? And then I was like, oh, wait, that's your print. <laughs> my, the, this is a print that my friend, my roommate, Chantel, got me off Wish. It's amazing. 
Um, I absolutely do need allergy shots. I was on allergy shots, but I travel too much, I guess, to get them as I'm supposed to. When I was on the allergy shots a couple of years ago, they um, we went on a world tour for 23 days and they won't let you take them with you. <laughs> so they're like, yeah, you're just gonna have to start over when you get back. And when I got back, I ended up having another trip after that. And I, yeah. So I just haven't gone and gotten back on them because I don't stick around long enough to get them as often as I'm supposed to get them. Hi guys. Thank you. But now, but like we were saying with Rita Thons and things, I just, I'm really all about being very inclusive because I know how it feels when someone like shuns you. And I don't like that because I'm from the Bible Belt and I'm gay as hell. So it like doesn't always mesh well. So I like the idea of our readathons being as inclusive as they are, which is why our prompts are as vague as they are so that you can do whatever you choose. Like read a book with yellow on the cover. If you want to read a romance, read the romance. If you're in the mood for a thriller, read a thriller. If you're in the mood for a manga, pick up with a manga. So that's why I like the fact that ours are seasonal. And some people read different types of books in different seasons. Mm -hmm. Like I know a lot of people read a lot of fluffy, fluffy contemporaries in the summer. But lately I've been getting into more and more dark books. Let's see, what it what it by red? Uh, so we have a magical realism, Greek mythology, mm, urban fantasy, I guess. And then without showing you the other books, let's see, I got a adult contemporary. I think that one's considered literary fiction. And then I got graphic novels. Showing. I got three graphic novels. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. If, I, I get. I don't. I don't really know the classifications for like all the adult books. <laughs> like adult books, it's either fantasy sci-fi, paranormal romance, romance, or just literary fiction, or a classic. Or, or what? Three mystery thrillers. Yeah, this one's like, there. there is a romance, but it's like just a small part. It's more a story of forgiveness. It might be considered either chiclet or literary fiction, depending on how I don't know. I think maybe literary fiction. Dignity, it might be. I don't know. That's not the right term, but you know what I'm meaning, right? Yeah. I don't know. It's not as heavy on the romance as, say, Red, White, and Royal Blue. <laughs> <laughs> Which is really heavy on the romance. But there is, but there is romance. And I want to say they're the people in like the main character of this book is like the same age as the char main characters in Red, White, and Royal Blue. She's 26. So it might be new adults. No, new adults like. Because Red, White, and Royal Blue could almost count as new adult. Because new adults yeah. like. Anywhere from 19 to 30 is kind of like new adults. Let's Google. That is like my, I swear that's my catchphrase because I'm like, my friend Donna, she's always like, what is blah, blah, blah. I was like, I don't know. Let's Google. Actually, I'll completely agree with Nightfear here where she says the whole, I think people sometimes focus too much on genre and not enough on the story. 
Mm-hmm. I completely agree. Yeah, I'm terrible with with uh, I don't know like genres for the most part. I'm I'm like still learning what the genres are because I don't know. I just read whatever sounds interesting. See, but, yeah, I only know new adult is eighteen to thirty. I will state the only so, reason why I know genres is because I organize my books based on genre. Oh God, I, that would be so confusing to me. I so uh uh-uh. uh. Because you alphabetize. If I alphabetize my books, it would drive me nuts. Actually, I don't really know if they're right now by genre. They kind of like I, I've tried the rainbow shells. Can't do that because I don't know what color all my books are. Couldn't find anything. It lasted for like two weeks, There's- and I had to undo it. You're not separating my my book series. No, just no. (laughs) And doing by like genre, as I said, I'm terrible with genres. So I would have things, I would say, oh, this is new adult romance. And then later thinking, oh no, that's literary fiction. And why can't I find it? Because it's in this other category. No, I would, no. But then again, Mine. how many books do you have, girl? I don't know. Alphabetizing for you is probably the best option. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, okay, so hopefully. I like That's kind of how mine are. Hopefully in the next week or two, I'll finally be like getting my library set up. Hopefully. I've, just, I've been so busy with doing other things that. My library has not been set up in all of this time, and I need to get that done. But once I do, I'll do, like, the whole bookshelf tour and all of that. I have so many. I have to buy more bookshelves. I literally have a library. It's going to be massive and amazing and might take up two rooms. But So jealous (laughs) of you and Zoe for being able to have a separate room for your books. Well, mine is my living room. I've claimed as we don't need it. Um, (laughs) The living room is now my library. It's big. It's beautiful. It's mine. There is like a little den. And uh, that's where our like love seat and stuff is and TV and all of that. And nobody really hangs out in there anyway, except for Xander. So it's like he can have the smaller room. So the room that would have been our living room is my library. The room that would have been our di- <laughs> the room that would have been our dining room <laughs> is now going to be my filming room and my spillover from my library. Um, <laughs> we have room in our kitchen for a table, so we don't need the dining room. That's going to be from. For me and my books and my filming and my Instagram and yeah. Oh, I completely <laughs> agree, Night Fear. We can never have too many books, just not enough shelves. Ugh. When I was okay, uh, when I was at Goodwill yesterday, I literally almost took my buggy, uh, grabbed a buggy and took it over there because it looked like someone had just donated their entire James Patterson collection. And I kept looking at it going, I don't have that one. 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 So I literally, and they were all like $3 for a hardback and they were all in good condition. So I was like, I almost went, just give me all of these. And I was like, but I just unhauled quietly, did an unhaul of like 16 books to remove from my shelves. I don't need to be bringing home 40 books to add to my shelf. (laughs) just yet <laughs> oh my god Niper says she wishes you didn't live so far away oh i know god I oh i know I, I i keep trying to get clint to come to chattanooga because i mean like clint and i need to be together in person at some point in time but also i want to take him to mckay's like you're gonna go home with like 50 books if you come here uh, because yeah. <laughs> i've got ollie's and I've got McKay's, and you will die I when mean, you walk into McKay's. If you come here, we have half price books. 
and I'll show you the good half price books. <laughs> and we have yeah. really good Goodwill stores. Well, we have Goodwill here too. I just haven't really. It's the most them out. you've ever paid for a book. Let me look at my shelf. I recently bought a book set. If that counts. I bought a book set for like sixty-eight dollars or something like that. I mean, Ooh, I got it right here. <laughs> I I recently bought it from um, Book Depository. Oh, apparently Night Fear lives in Tennessee. It's the uh, Game of Thrones series. But, oh my gosh. I mean. These are like leather bound. Maybe. And they're like freaking tiny. So these pages are like Bible pages. They're like so thin. When you pull the, the writing is in your, ridiculously small. In your vlog, when you pulled those out. I started laughing before you even opened up the books. It's like, she's not going to be able to read those. Those are going to be really freaking tiny. Oh, I can read them, but I'm just like, it really has like a Bible feel to it because of like the size and the leather and the pages and the, oh my God, that's so freaking tiny. <laughs> See, I plan on ordering those when he finally gets out the last book and they have a box set with all those. When he finally releases the final book, then I'll get into Game of Thrones, the books. Yeah, I live in Chattanooga. Also, for those of you that um, are in the Tennessee area or not too far from it, uh, September 21st is a book festival um a rather large one here in Chattanooga is called Yahoo Book Festival. And it's like the website is yahoofest.org. I mean, it's one day and it's September 21st. And I can tell you, we've got a lot of big names coming here. Basically, what should happen is I should just drive up for that weekend go with you to that, and then you drive up to Oklahoma in November for our Oklahoma Teen Book Con. In November? Yeah. <laughs> when in November? Because I'll be at Y'all Fest in November. Oh, yeah. Which I've already booked my hotel for that, or my Airbnb. Okay, so let's see. We have... Here's some of the authors that will be here in Chattanooga. We've got... Arvin Amadi, David Arnold, Sirbani bon, bon, Bonerji, uh, Kayla Kagan, Brittany Cavallaro, Olivia Cole, Dave Connis, Helene Dunbar, Sarah and I, Jesse Ann Foley, Guadalupe Garcia McCall, Emily Henry, Greg Howard, Kimberly Jones, Sheba Karen, Karim. Uh, there's a whole bunch of them. Cindy Pine, Gilly Sagal, uh, Megan Shepard, uh, Jeff Setner, Jasmine Warga, just a, a whole bunch of them. I would only if you go to yahoofest.org, you can see the list of everybody. And it's November 16th. The Yahoo Fest is September 21st. And your thing in Oklahoma November, is when? November 16th. But That would be literally right after I got back from Carlson. And, I still can't do that. <laughs> and um, do they give free I books don't know if they do a lot of free books there. I'm, I, this is actually only the second year that they've had the Yahoo Book Festival. So it may be more of a um, get your book signed kind of thing. Like um, Y'all Fest, you, you can get some arcs at Y'all Fest, but it's a lot more of like getting books signed and that kind of thing versus like BEA and BookCon, you end up with a ton of free books. Um, the Oklahoma Teen BookCon, it's a lot. This will be their second one. 
they did in 2017 and then so many people it got such a big hit that they book started booking bigger name authors which i still have not released for us yet i have to wait till september for them to release them it's driving me nuts i want to read their books before i go and i can't it's driving me nuts but um it's more of there's a lot of author panels and then they play this um blind book date kind of thing where you sit with a group and then they rotate the authors around and you sit down and you actually get to interact with them and then at the end there was a lot of you go into this room with all this signing but you had to buy like one book there to get into the signing yeah the way this one goes it looks like there's um a kickoff event with jeff setner in the morning and then there's like panels and then lunch and live entertainment and then um author signings and then more panels and then more author signings like ours for i don't know if you'll get free books or not though <laughs> for 2017 it was maggie steve otter that kicked off the event And she but played. yeah, you can still come to Chattanooga. Oh, if you if you can't if you can't come, I'm trying to get Clint to come with me to BEA and BookCon next year. So I'm like, fly here, and then we can go up together. Um, hopefully, the Book Chronicles is another more booktubers that are also here in uh, Tennessee. They live in Nashville. We can all like ride up together. Road trip. Hold on. By ooh, ooh, ooh. Wonder if my car would make that. Because it's an 11 hour drive from Norman, Oklahoma to Chattanooga, Tennessee. Oh, you can drive here. You can leave your car here. So but you can here. drive here. You can leave your car here. We'll hop in my little Beetle and drive up to Nashville. And then we'll leave my car there. And we'll hop into the Book Chronicles. Um, I forget what they have. It's an SUV, I think. We'll ride with them up to New York. That way, we don't have to worry about how we're going to get all of our books home. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> We're, we'll have to worry about how the how the hell we're all gonna get a hundred and something books or for each of us in one car. But <laughs> well, we could also do if um, my minivan is good because I have a minivan. Instead of taking my Beetle up, I can drive my minivan up and just pick them up, and then we have a minivan to drive all the way there. And there's plenty of room in that sucker. Tempting. I highly recommend going to BookCon if you can, BEA and BookCon if you can. See, if I do go to BEA and BookCon, BEA is where I want to go. <laughs> Sorry, I just read one in the room. <laughs> oh, good Lord. Okay, I have like 15 people that are like, let's all go. <laughs> right chat, and Mel is driving us all. You heard it. You heard it first. Yes. <laughs> But uh, we just might have to get a booktuber like meet up just in Tennessee. <laughs> if you're yeah, from Austin, that'd be cool. Right in the Tennessee. Oh, we can so do like a, a cool little meet and greet thing if people want to come to like the Chattanooga um, Yahoo Fest for reals. But um, what was I gonna say? But at the same point, like if I do get to go to BEA and BookCon, at BEA is when I'm going to get all my books. BookCon, I want to do panels. Yeah. I like that's, listen, I like that's definitely the way to do it. <laughs> I don't care about getting things signed that much unless there's like an author there that I love like so much that I need to have it signed. But I'm more of just just let me go listen to people talk because I like to hear your thoughts on things. Because all the little panels you put in, all your vlogging, 
or everyone else has done, and I'm like, I wanted to be there. I want to hear that whole vlog. I want to hear that whole Yeah, so for me, BEA is all about, you know, getting those books and meeting publishers and stuff. <laughs> Not dying. BookCon. <laughs> yeah, BookCon <laughs> is the panels. Yeah, um, Yahoo Fest is going to be, you know, all about panels, maybe a little bit of signing. Um, Y'all Fest is going to be, like, all about getting books signed for me. See, like, this shelf up here, every book up here except for that Slayer book that you sent me is all signed. Because I have to have that one next to my Kristen White set because of Slayer. But, like, because Kristen White came up and I have, like, all, I had all these books by her that I went and got signed. So it's up there with my Adriana Mather books. So. I'll you don't have to be big to get into BEA, I don't think. But, like, she was saying, we were talking about prices and stuff for, like, a book blogger thing. It's, like, 250 But if you try to apply for a media pass, and then tell them that you're a booktuber. There's possibilities you could get in for free. Yeah, if if you get the media pass, it doesn't cost you anything to get in. I did not do the media pass thing. I did the blogger way, and it was two hundred and fifty dollars, and I got in for that. But I was told that I should have gone with the media pass thing because I could have. I should have been able to get approved and did not cost anything. I just tell them you're a milk knight. <laughs> Clint is dying now. That's <laughs> perfect. Oh, Are you okay, Clint? I'm good. Oh, I'm hot now. <laughs> I like that melanite. <laughs> I like that too. Ooh, frog emergency CPR. <laughs> okay, my laughs range from um, Sandra Bullock and Speed to Skolnick in Revenge of the Nerds. And sometimes it says it sounds like a hyena put in a blender while it's laughing. So my 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 laugh ranges. <laughs> it's when I start turning I have, colors that you need to like make sure I'm okay. <laughs> Cause I have turned green, I have turned yellow from laughing too hard. So yeah. <laughs> I have considered getting a Patreon. I'm not really sure what I would offer with that though. So I haven't done it because I have, I don't know what I would offer. Because oh, Emma, I will say I'm now trying to get an actual schedule down of posting videos. But right now, I still don't know if I want to do Monday, Wednesday, or Wednesday, Friday because there's some weeks I post on Monday, Wednesday, and there's some weeks I do Wednesday, Friday. <laughs> but I'm trying to get a system down because I didn't have a system before. I'm like, if I get systems down, then we can work more on editing. This is my system. <laughs> okay. Here's my system. All of the pink things are film. All of the blue ones are edit. And all of the yellow ones are post. And so look, far I have, there's July. There's August. There's September. <laughs> October. <laughs> November. And December. <laughs> You're not as organized as me. <laughs> Girl, you have your filming organized. I have my reading organized. <laughs> This is my organizational system. And I do it with, I learned to do it with these little post-it note things like the, because I have to move things around so often. So, yeah. See, Night Fear, neither am I. The only editing I do is I really is 
adding uh, my beginner and my ender, which I still feel like need to be changed up a little bit because that song is getting on my nerves that I chose. I highly recommend editing. I hate editing. I hate editing with a passion. It is my least favorite thing of all YouTube -y things to do. I hate editing. However, <laughs> I highly recommend it because it makes, in my opinion, it makes the videos a lot easier to watch. Um, for one, like when I'm talking, I get like, I don't know, brain farts. <laughs> and I'm just like, stop dead in the middle of a sentence and like that. And so I'll, I'll, when I'll go in the editing, I cut out any long gaps. Or if I get like a phone call or um, somebody like writes me in the middle, I'll cut that out. You know, I'll, I'll like, okay, say I'm saying something and my phone makes a noise then I'll stop what I'm saying and then re-say what I just said so I can cut out that part where it's been interrupted. See, you suffer from what I suffer. I call it the ooh shiny squirrel moment. <laughs> yeah, I have a lot of squirrel moments. Yours is more pauses and me it's more of I go on a tangent way over here for like, I could be gone for three hours and like 5,000 other conversations and then immediately just jump right back to where I was at the beginning. Thank you, Kaylin. <laughs> you like See, watching unedited videos better. I try to make my videos as unchoppy as possible, but I mean, I think my videos would probably not be as pleasant if I didn't edit them. See, the thing I need to work on is I need to work on how to vlog properly. My vlogs have all sucked. And they've all been horrible. At least in my own personal opinion. So I'm like, that's the thing I need to work on. And I technically only vlog for our readathons, and they still are not that good. I need to learn to do like a weekend vlog. But my life is so boring. It's like I go to work, I come home, I go to work, I come home, I go to work, I come home. My life is boring. Oh, thank you, Emma. Well, you know, when, when you do like, um, I don't know if you're, if, you're not doing a whole lot of other stuff. Maybe vlog a little, you know, sneakily vlog a little at work. Or um, I have <laughs> I've been doing a lot of time lapse crap. So like, here's my camera. <laughs> oh, there's no nothing on it. Hold on, it's all on my SD card. I just emptied. Um. Camera. I've been doing like time lapse videos of me working on my yard at my other house while I'm trying to get it ready to sell. Um, or I showed like in my last vlog, I showed my like nighttime skincare kind of thing, which I mean, what are you, what are you pulling out over there? Oh, this is my. <laughs> Uh, your camera? Yeah. Oh, that's, what is that? Honestly. It's like a tube. It's a digital video camera that my mom and them ordered off of line from Japan. <laughs> oh, okay. So that's like my mom Okay, I, I now have this cool little GoPro that Marty got me for my birthday. But before that, I had this little pink, um, we called it a Chinese knockoff of a Chinese knockoff of a GoPro. <laughs> same, same. It was terrible. Like, I used it once and I'm like, mm -mm, no, it's really bad. <laughs> so Xander has it 
to, it, it's perfect for him because it literally cost, I think, I want to say it was like five, ten dollars that she spent on it. So it's crap. And right here, I would use my phone to film on, but my phone is a piece of crap. I have an Alcatel, which is an off brand of Samsung. My phone is so off brand that. Places, if I was to break the screen of my phone, I could not go to a place that repairs phones to get it repaired because nobody works on it because it's so off brand. What is your phone? It's an Alcatel. Alcatel. Okay. Or I got it through Cricket. That's my. It's one of the plans we have out here. Because Cricket, I pay $67 a month for unlimited everything, including international calling, if I wanted to do international calling. Yeah, you could probably go on like eBay and get a used whatever, just for filming and not actually have it on a plan or anything. I didn't even think of that. Oh. No. Because I did all of my filming on my phone for a long time until at least for the first year, I did all of my filming on my phone. And then I got this awesome thing here, which I love. <laughs> now I do all my filming on this. Rarely do I ever use my phone anymore. See. Unless I can't. If I'm not allowed to like bring my camera somewhere, then I'll use my phone. See, I the thing I want to work on more with vlogs is I do like to. I'm changing to Boost. Yeah, Boost doesn't work where I live. <laughs> like the cell service is crappy. I'm in the middle of BFE. <laughs> I'm in a small town of Newcastle. The only thing we have here is a casino. Is a what? Is a casino. The casino I used to work at. Oh, yeah, that one. <laughs> but, like, that's the only thing Oklahoma has is casinos now. But. It's a really good thing I don't live anywhere near a casino. See, but I will yeah. say, I went with Chantel and them to the one across the street, the little travel stop, and I put $2 on a machine and one fifteen. And I was like, okay, done, cash out, we're good. <laughs> I got my money back from my, my dinner. But the thing I want to work on more is getting comfortable vlogging in public. Vlogging what? In public. Because I do go to bookstores quite often just to browse and just to look around. But I don't know if I can actually take something like this, this this camera to like half price books or Barnes and Nobles or full circle bookstore, which if you ever come to Oklahoma, I have to take you to full circle floor to ceiling books with a ladder. Just say what the, the thing is you just, you just do it. And uh, you get you get used to doing or like you get used to vlogging in public by just doing it and as far as being allowed to do it in places i've done it in barnes and noble before and you and just I, a lot of booktubers have used barnes and nobles and stuff to vlog in so and i've done it in i've done it in other bookstores too you if somebody says something then you turn it off but typically nobody's going to say anything you just do it See, I have it's weird about, and uncomfortable at first, but I had thought about maybe vlogging, like going just to go shopping at a bookstore or something. Because I was contemplating mm -hmm. the half price books today. And if I do, I'm, I I'm thinking about since I got makeup on, I might film um, something. I have like I have this massive makeup haul. I like, or, okay, I, I have a, an obsession with many things and makeup is one of them. Um, but I got like 
ColourPop has the Disney Princess collection. And I already had like the eyeshadow palette for the Princess collection. But I I ordered they they came out with a villains collection. And what? yeah, they came out with a villains collection. And I ordered the entire villains collection as well as some other stuff from the Princess collection. So I have the entire villains collection and stuff just waiting for me to unbox. How long does it get a, it take to get approved for the passes? Um, it took for me about a month. Um, so basically yeah. end of January. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you, I would say the sooner you can, like, if you do it in January or as soon as it's available to do it, um, apply for the media pass, go ahead and do that then. That way, if, you're denied for it, then you can try again with the like blogger pass. And again, that's going to take time. Um, so yeah, it took me about a month to get approved for the, for the blogger one. Um, but next time I'm definitely going to go for the media pass. So I'm going to do that early, early. Um, as far as book con goes, you don't need to get approved for anything. It's literally, it's, if you want a pass for the whole weekend, it's $55 and that's it. Just so um, you know, if I do go next year, just so you know, I will be glued to you probably. That's fine. That's uh, I want somebody glued to me. Or I'll be glued. Like if you have to go somewhere, like real fast to go do something, and Zoe's near us, I might go. Like, hey Zoe, I'm latching on. I'll latch onto someone that I know because I saw those crowds and y'all's and everyone's vlogs and stuff, and I'm like, Lord, my anxiety. I don't know if my anxiety can handle that. <laughs> Book on. And, like BEA was nothing compared to BookCon as far as crowds go. Like there were a lot of people at BEA, but it was only people that were in the industry, one way or another. And there were still a lot of people. BookCon was freaking insane. Oh my gosh! Like, oh, it it was. I don't typically have a problem with with a lot of people around I, I i'm one of those people that well, i'll sit there and talk to anybody that's in line next to me i'll make friends with anybody around me because yeah, more than likely i'm the annoying one that's like hey just talk to me and distract me real fast <laughs> but it was yeah book con was was a lot like it was it was almost too much for me just yeah there were so many people it was yeah <laughs> I will state, like, we, I've gone to what is called SoonerCon, which is like a Comic-Con at convention, that, a little small one that we've had in Oklahoma, and that crowd was like maybe 250 people, and I flipped out. Oh, yeah. Like, it's um, a answer, thing. To answer your question, Night Fear, um, so everything, like... There, there are elevators to go from the different floors. The showroom is just one big floor, but they do have panels on other floors. But they, there is a, an elevator for that. However, it's so crowded that it, it it's not going to be the easiest for somebody with a wheelchair. It's you know, it, they will get in early. They'll they'll let people with med um, with wheelchairs and things like that in a little bit before the rest of the crowd, but because of the massive amounts of people, it's going to be harder. Like book con is going to be really hard. Bea is not going to be as bad because there's not as many people, but book con, book con is absurd with the amount of people. Like. At any time, I could reach my arms out and touch, like, five or six people within my arm. <laughs> like, and I'm not, you know, I'm a small person. 
<laughs> I don't have a wide range here. So, yeah. yeah. It I, was really crowded. I would suggest maybe just going to BEA and just seeing how you feel comfortably going before you, like, say you're going to go every year, you know? Like, I would attempt it. Doesn't work you out. You could enough. always purchase if you if you're like you I got, I got this I want to try and do book con you can always purchase a one day for book con or a weekend for book con and you can purchase it I think there at the event um for those not for BEA but for book con you can if you wanted to try it I don't know that I would recommend it for book con BEA but yes. I mean but if you're if you're going to both and you're in Okay, if you're going to both and you do BEA as getting the arcs and all of that stuff and BEA is not nearly as crowded, it would be okay. And then your intention with book con is to do the panels. The panels are on a different floor and it's not nearly as crazy. That would be the way to go. That's what I would recommend for book con is if you're going to go and you have a wheelchair, go for the panels, not for the showroom at all. <laughs> And if you need to, like, say you're wanting a book and you see too big of a crowd, send your daughter, send your husband or something. Go stand in line. Go give me that now. You know? But you utilize those with you. <laughs> yeah, I'm just thinking about trying to get through a crowd of people. It would be really hard. Because trying to get through a crowd of people and not being in a wheelchair is hard at BookCon. But Heck, I actually found myself in a couple of lines without realizing it <laughs> because I was trying to make my way through a crowd and there was like this almost like a hallway type thing that was just packed with people and I was trying to get through to get somewhere else and it wasn't moving and I was stuck and that was, turns out it was in the line. <laughs> so I was just like, well, I guess I'm standing in this line because <laughs> I couldn't get through. You're welcome. I'm glad I could provide that knowledge. It it is crazy. See now, it, it, it's for somebody that doesn't have any problem too with crowds. I had a, I, I was overwhelmed. <sighs> See, um, speaking of that, but are you glad you went? Did you have fun? I, yeah, I'm, I'm glad I went to both. Um, as far BEA was amazing. Getting so many books was freaking awesome. BookCon was overwhelming. And I'm really glad that I decided to not try so much with getting books and stuff while at BookCon. And I did focus more on panels. Like the second day, that's all I did of book con was panels and the first day I was just getting my phone case signed and getting um an arc that I wanted but other than that I was just like panels it was a lot easier but I was glad I went because I got to see everybody like all of the other booktubers and stuff and that was really cool I feel like I know I'm such a extroverted person but I feel like when I get there, I feel like I'm going to see all those faces, and then I'm going to be like, hi, how are you? I'm going to go this way. You don't know me, but I love you, and I'm going to go off this way. Because I'm such a small channel, and I know for me, personally, I don't know if I want to be a big channel. I like being a small channel, because I've noticed with BookTube... There are two separate sets of, you've got like the small booktubers, which are usually like 2,000 subscribers and below. And then you've got the ones that are like the really big name ones. And I feel like if I'm standing next to them, it's like I'm meeting real celebrities and I'm going to be like, hi, how are you? <laughs> Shoot, I want I want to be Kayla. What are you talking about? I, Hello. I want to be. 
I want to be books and Lala big. <laughs> I, I don't mind if I do get to be that big of a booktuber. I wouldn't mind, but I also don't. I also don't mind that if I never hit 500 subscribers, you know, because my channel I'm is so real. <laughs> like for me, it's like I want. I like talking about books. That's why I made the channel. I'm not doing the channel to make money or anything. I'm doing it for me to have an outlet to talk and to talk to other booktubers and other book loving people that I don't get that often in Oklahoma because Oklahoma hates literature. Oh, I can tell you for anybody that's considering to doing a book channel <laughs> to make money. Good luck. You're wasting time. <laughs> <Good luck. laughs> like, Unless I, you you, start you, I mean, some people, like you said, the really big ones, they can make money. Like, I make like, okay, if, if they, if, if I calculated up how much what I made in a month's time, if I split it up over the amount of hours that I put into to YouTube, I would probably, I have no idea how many hours I put into YouTube. But I, I would probably be pennies that I make per hour because, yeah, I make, like, I think this month I'm going to have earned, like, seven, right now I'm right, just under $70 for the month. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's a tiny, tiny amount. <laughs> So yeah, see, but I'll, they won't even pay you if you don't make a. a they won't even pay you anything if you don't make over a hundred dollars. So that money has to roll over to the next month. Oh wow! Yeah. <laughs> but, but like I said, I'm like I don't mind being a small channel because it's just I get to be me and I don't have to feel like I'm obligated, you know. Like, I don't feel like I have to talk about, like, the latest book right now. I can read something like Pretty Little Liars that people consider to be, like, YA trash and just have fun. Zoe taught me that. Read what the fuck you want to read. Zoe. <laughs> like, Zoe taught me that by her reading this. Or her reading the Gossip Girl series or any other like short series like that. Oh, and Night Fear, totally. I'm I'm a big hugger. I'm I'm always a I, I hug everybody. But I have learned though, like I, I I didn't just do that when I was at BEA and BookCon because I know a lot of people are not huggers and are not comfortable with that. So that is something that um if, if you don't already know if they're a hugger or not, ask them if it's okay. For me, uh, it's absolutely okay. I'm a huge hugger. I, I love hugs. I'm a Hufflepuff. It's like in our very nature is to run up to people and hug them. Especially if you look like you're down or you look like you don't feel good or you look like you're about to cry over something. I will instantly try to hug you. and be like, come here. Come here. Just, just, just come. Just come to me. Just cry into my shoulder. It'll be okay. No one has to see. Just, just look at me. Hug me. You know, I'm like that type of person with all my friends. So. And if I talk to you, like, as much as I talk to you quite often of all of us, y'all are already considered, like, close, close friends. So I'm like, if I see you in public, I'm going to instantly hug you, whether you want to be hugged or not, because it's me. I'm like, deal with it. You're getting a hug. <laughs> like if I ever go to England, I'm sorry, Charlie, Emily, Julie, Kieran, Simone, and all instant hugs. But <laughs> okay, you know what? My, my thought is with uh, reading what you want and saying what you want and doing what you want. That it's your channel. <laughs> I, okay. yeah. 
me being me, I've always been a reader, but there was a time where I started, when I started doing drag and stuff, I quit buying books because certain people were making fun of me for being a reader. And they're like, oh, you're into Harry Potter. You must be a loser and stuff like that. So it was starting to eat at me. So I would hide all my books. And that was like a span of four years. And then I discovered BookTube. And my collection has grown since then. So... <laughs> Like, I'm happy to say that I have grown lots and lots of people's book, like bookshelves. You really that, that makes me happy. You <laughs> in a book outlet? That is the worst thing in the world to do to me. I was like a place I could buy books from. What? Thank you. I love book outlet so much. Because Oklahoma, we've already lost Borders. We've already lost Hastings. If I lose half price books or Barnes and Nobles, I will go insane. Like, I will go insane. <laughs> well, thank I you, like, Night Fear. I like wear my hair like this. That's actually kind of cute. <laughs> you know what that makes me think of? Um, I look like an anime character. It, well, I was thinking more Popples. Is that what that cartoon was called? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm okay. talking about? I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> I look like a bubble. The cartoons from back then, like the cutesy this style of it. Hold on. I'm gonna I'm gonna Google. Let's Google popples for those that don't <laughs> know. Popples was a cartoon that came out around the time of Care Bears. I only remember Popples is because my, Popples. my baby blanket was Popples. Here we go. Here's some Popples for you. Well, exactly what I was <laughs> Did your hair look better? Like if you would have added a little bit like up here, you would have been a Popple. Just because the color scheme. I look like a Popple. Yes. Is it me? <laughs> Almost. <laughs> or what was that one show? Oh, there was that cartoon, the underwater creatures. Snorkels? Snorkels, yep. Huh. All we have local is Books A Million and thrift stores. Melanie introduced Book Outlet and Thrift Books to me. Can't say my husband loves it, but I'm happy with it. Yeah, my husband feels the same way. <laughs> Again, you should also check out Book Depository. Yeah, because you can get those uh, UK editions at Book Depository. It's the closest UK I have to me. My UK copy of How to Hang a Witch. I don't know if y'all can see back there in this corner. Right here. There's two book outlet boxes sitting there. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus, woman. Oh, you, you, have, you have no idea. I have, I have a ridiculous amount. Like, I, I still have to do, like, my May book outlet haul, I think. And my June book outlet haul. And I'm going to have a, I know I'm going to have a July book outlet haul. Me and my roommate have now decided that with Book Outlet to help me get to that $35 without having to buy too many books, she wants to start adding books and give me the money for her books that she's ordering because we're trying this whole library thing of her reading books before she buys them because she's so mad at herself for buying like 50 books last year and hasn't touched a single one of them. So we're just adding the books that she ends up loving that she wants to put on in her collection. That way we both get books for book outlet, seeing as I'm kind of broke now. And you, you can earn the points. Yes. 
Though if she's ever ordering um, her own that's like $35 worth, send her a referral link. Oh, well, duh. You send her a referral link, and that will get her $10 off her order of $25 or more, and that will get you $10 in rewards. Is it bad I've contemplated using my other email address and just referring me to that and purchasing, like having my mom buy something with that email address so I can get the referral $10? I mean, I do have like 12 different email addresses I can like come up with. That is not weird. <laughs> that is not weird at all because... Girl, I have like... Almost 250 I'm, books on my shelf right now that I haven't read. And we I'm don't want not going to say how many I have. <laughs> <laughs> but I will say, Mel, when you do do book outlet, you don't go for a lot of like the big name books. You have brought our attention to some books throughout your things that I've been looking at like, I've never heard of that. That sounds intriguing. Kind of like your hashtag Hamlet kind of things. Love those books, too. I don't need to read them, but you've got me interested in um, I almost bought it the other day when I was at Half Price Books. The uh, Face on the Milk Carton. Oh, that's a good series. Because the fact that you had loved that series so much, I was like, I'm kind of curious. But is it worth four ninety nine to get the first one? Hmm. Yes. Though you might be able to find it cheaper on Book Outlet. I don't know. But it, it, they're short books, too. Great for readathons. I need shorter books to add to my collection for readathons. Because if not, I have books like this thick to. I grab a hold of it. This. Oh. To try to. <laughs> hold to on. A, I have books that go from this <laughs> to this. Yeah. This is a thousand pages. <laughs> this is almost a thousand, I think. This is uh, Name of the Wind. No? Whoa. I thought Name of the Wind was longer. I think this is one of my shorter books. This book is 79 pages. I'm thinking I'm going to do a, actually do a video um, reading this out loud. Politically correct bedtime stories. That would be really cute. No, you should do like short little segments. One of each story. Or is it just one story? Well, no, there are different stories. We've got, like, Little Red Riding Hood, The Emperor's New Clothes, The Three Little Pigs, Rumpelstiltskin. Or we do, like, bedtime stories with Melanie and do one at, like, one a night. Like, <laughs> film them all, but then, like, post them, like, one a week or one a night. Maybe. We have The Three Codependent Goats Gruff. Rapunzel, Cinderella, Goldilocks, Snow White, Chicken Little, The Frog Prince, Jack and the Beanstalk, The Pied Piper of Hamlin. Might have to check those out, Night Fear, because that series does sound really interesting. Monument 14. She mentioned them in one of her videos. Oh. And yeah, I really like really watch a like couple of videos. videos. Uh, I don't know that I would do just one because, I mean, the whole book is 79 pages long. I mean. True. It would literally take me, like, maybe two minutes at the most to read, like, the first story. I think. Like, I, Little Red Riding Hood goes from page one to page four. I think. And the writing is not, like, super small. Outside <laughs> of poetry and... Uh, graphic novels and things that go for Harry Potter. I don't have much that's like really short. If the only ones that I have are like James Patterson. Are you talking about like the little book bite 
things. The book shots. Yeah, that's it. Like I bought this one yesterday at Goodwill because I didn't have it. And because I am a type of person that wanted to know the difference between the British covers and the American book shots that I bought. Both of these go to the same series, but they're two different books. So I got one from Book Depository and then the American to see the difference, which is really weird is because American paperbacks are taller than British paperbacks, but British book shots by Jane Patterson are taller than the American ones. I find that so weird. It irritates me. <laughs> but yeah, I'm like, these are like- I literally just ordered the same book. Um, in both versions, the U.S. and the U.K., I pre-ordered for, uh, oh gosh, Tunnel, what is it? It's um the sequel to City of Ghosts by V.E. Schwab. Oh, I know what you're talking about. I can't I remember, it's... something Tunnels, huh? Tunnel something, I think. But I ordered the paperback because that's what it comes out in in the UK. I ordered the paperback UK for myself and then at the, around the same time the hardback US edition will be coming out. And I got that for Xander cuz apparently he read the first book which I haven't read it yet and he really loved it but I loved the the UK cover of the paperback and so I gave him the hard cover that came in one of the uh Alcrate Junior boxes. And Night Fear, yes, I have read Zoo by James Patterson. It's it's a good story. Like, I need to reread it because I read it, like, back in the day when he first started doing, like, book shots and stuff. Because Zoo is, like, a short novella. No, Zoo 2 is the novella. Zoo is a big book. Whatever. I've read Zoo, and I've read Zoo 2. They're good. They're just not my favorites. by him if i was going to recommend some favorites i would definitely recommend sundays at tiffany's like if you like romance novels read sundays at tiffany's like now <laughs> like the tagline is what if your soulmate is your imaginary friend from when you were a kid oh that's like some other book that I just read not that long ago. I'm like, it's amazing. That's also like another book that I just recently got. This is um, our Tiffany's for those of y'all that. The don't. Sound of Drowning. We got an imaginary friend. An unexpected love and an unforgettable twist. I am not a. Uh, I don't know. I don't. I. I read one James Patterson. It was like witches and wizards or something like that, and I didn't really. Get into it. Records isn't one of his best series. Like all of his adult stuff's a lot better than his middle grade. Like I, I've, been, I've been kind of hesitant with uh, any of the, his other books because of how I felt with that one. I'm like, mm, I don't know if I want to keep reading the others. <laughs> with his middle grade, Maximum Right is better than Witches, even though I prefer Witches personally. But that's just because I like the characters. Um. Maximum Ride is really good until you get to book four and then it goes downhill. Um, his Confessions of a Murder Suspect series is like perfection. They're YA and they're like amazing thrillers. They're cheesy YA thrillers, but they are really, really good. Um, but I prefer his adult stuff like Women's Murder Club and uh, Alex Cross and Michael Bennett 
but Invisible by James Patterson will forever be my favorite James Patterson book. And I need to go buy the sequel, which just came out. And then his romance. Let me see are- what. Let me see what I have ordered. I've got some uh, books pre-ordered. Oh my goodness! I just got a bunch of cute outfits. Like I just ordered a whole bunch of cute outfit stuff from Amazon. I'm so excited about. Hopefully everything fits because I came up with this idea of what I want to do for um, um, Book Net Fest because I'm, I'm planning on attending Book Net Fest for any of you that might be down like in Orlando area. Um, but I just ordered a whole bunch of clothes to wear while I'm down there because, okay. I don't know if any of you ever heard of Disney bounding um, where you dress in outfits that kind of resemble different Disney characters. Uh huh. And so I have like all of these Disney bounding outfits that are so cute. Oh my gosh. I cannot wait. I've got like one to be um, Perdita which is the female um, like there's, um, from 101 Dalmatians. The there's <laughs> Snow White. I've got Mulan and I've got Belle. I have outfits for all of them. You have to have Belle. And I have like, like super cute things to go along with it. Like for Belle, I have like a, it's a cute, like I think, like 50 style dress with like the petticoat underneath and everything. And um, like it's a shorter dress, like to my knees and a little bag, like the purse that's actually like a rose. Yeah. A bunch of super cute little things like uh, my snow out, snow white outfit is going to be like, some yellow sneakers and some yellow pants and a blue tank top and um, a little necklace with an apple on it and a purse that's an apple. Yeah. (laughs) Perfect. I was like with the bell one though, until you said the rose part, I was in my head going, how are they going to tell it's bell and not well, it's, a, it's a yellow, it's a yellow dress. Oh, and then there's also a bracelet that's got like a, a teapot mm-hmm. and um, like a page from the story, like a line from the story and stuff like that. Um, it's got, I think it's like the candlestick and stuff and a rose. Nice. Um, it's like a little charm bracelet. Too bad I can't. The Perdita one is like a 50 style dress that's um, white with black polka dots. And she wears a blue collar. So I've got like this lace, not lace, uh, satin choker. And then I've got a little bracelet that's got little black paw prints. Oh, it might still be on my car. Never mind. To be that, so cute. To my Beauty and the Beast purse to use. It's like a little book. I just can't. Oh, stop. a tale as old as time. It's got a rose, a little thing that says a tale as old as time. There's the book and then an old tea kettle. And then for my Mulan one, same yellow pants, same blue tank top, but a green cardigan and a red belt that goes around. Um, and I think that's it. And it matches Mulan's little outfit. Yeah, and then the yellow shoes. Look oh, and Perdita's up. also has like a little blue bag. I'm like, come on, look at someone getting so creative over there. I'm excited. It's going to be really cute. I can't wait to watch your vlogs. Oh, Tunnel of Bones. That was the book I was thinking of. 
the uh, V.E. Schwab. Let's see some other books I have pre-ordered. I've got Children of Virtue and Vengeance, um, Wilder Girls. I kind of just unhauled Children of Blood and Bone because the fact that I pre-ordered it last year and I still haven't touched it. So I was like... Oh, I just recently read it and I loved it. And um, I saw Tomi at BEA or at BookCon. Well, actually, I was walking down the street with her <laughs> and I told her that I really enjoyed it and that I had pre-ordered the other right before I went. See, I took it down off my shelf for now so it doesn't like keep staring at me and me feel so bad for not reading it that I'm going to rent it from the library when I'm in the mood for it. And if I want to, if I love it enough, I will repurchase it and own my own uh, copy again. I also pre-ordered The Adventure Zone, Murder on the Rockport Limited, uh, The Guinevere Deception by Kirsten White, Sweet. Ninth House by Lee Bardugo, The Queen of Nothing by Holly Black. Still haven't read any of that. <laughs> Supernova by Marissa Meyer, The Toll by Neil Schusterman, Arusha and the, wait, no, I already got that one. <laughs> uh, Chain of Gold by Cassandra uh, Clare. I was wondering if that was going to be one of them. Of course. I still. I was just making my way through the list of my open I orders. I the, the newest one that just came out, the Shadow Hunters Market. Ordered this. Oh gosh, when did I order this? Uh, yeah, I haven't read it yet. I've got it. I got it back on the fourth, um, but I haven't read it. I'm still uh, on like the Bane Chronicles because I'm reading in like order now of what I'm supposed to read before I get to Lady Midnight. I ordered Ghost of Sh uh, Ghost of the Shadow Market and Chain of Gold. On January 14th is <laughs> when I ordered them. Well, Chain of Gold was supposed to come out this year when you pre-ordered it. And now it's supposed to arrive March 3rd, 2020. Yep. That's a long time. <laughs> but that's okay. I have enough to read until then. I'm trying to be more selective on the books that I actually buy these days, seeing as I don't have a lot of money to be purchasing. I mean, I have a feeling that I'm going to be owning this full entire series soon, but that's just because this helped me through a mental, like, upheaval, and I've been watching the show until it's time to read the second book. Um, <laughs> but... Oh, yeah, I actually did already submit my thing for the pre-order for Supernova. Yeah, my, my name will be in the back of the second paperback, the second book in paperback. My name will be mentioned in there And because I pre-ordered Supernova. And with V.E. Schwab, I, like, unhauled all of them, but, like, A Darker Shade of Magic I kept because I'm still interested. But I got rid of Vicious because the cover I have no longer matches the new one. So it's like, if I want to read Vicious, I'll repurchase the matching set. And uh, I got rid of the archived because I don't want to read that book and fall in love and never get a book three to that series. Because it's been like, she may never give us book three to that series. So I'm like, why bother reading it if I may never get the ending? <laughs> I don't, I haven't heard anything about Good Choice Reading doing that. I ordered the, the Good Choice Reading book for um, Queen of Air and Darkness. And that was really cool. But, um, and got it signed and personalized and all of that. But I haven't heard anything about Chains of Gold. Mine's in the first one, but I can't find the hardback. From this. Oh. Yeah, I am. Um, I have, like, a bunch of other books that I want to pre-order, but I am trying to not, like, I, I have been trying to not order everything that I want. <laughs> because, for one, I mean, that's a lot. And two, if somebody wants to, like, 
send me a gift for birthday or Christmas or whatever, then I always tell everybody just go to my like Amazon wish list because everything I can think of I add to that. Mm. And um do it. My original pre-order list was 47 bucks that I wanted to pre-order. That come out this year. It is now down to 10 bucks. Oh. And I I haven't picked up any of them. <laughs> but 10 bucks from May to November because I had pre-ordered earlier this year. But like I still need to get Final by Stephanie Garber, but I still need to read Legendary. I need to get my copy of Red, White, and Royal Blue. I need Unsolved by James Patterson, which is book two to Invisible. Ghost of the Shadow Market. Five Dark Fates, which is the conclusion to Kendar Blake. To Three Dark Crowns. That's on my that's on my wish list. That's one uh, of them. Wayward Son, book two to Carry On. By Rainbow Rowell. Um, Capturing the Devil, which is the final book in the Carrie Maniscalco. But I will be pre-ordering her little novella of Thomas, because Thomas. And Forgotten, which is the newest House of Night novel for this little collection of books behind me. The books that saved me through high school. Um, Winterwood by Shay Earnshaw. Because, That's also on my wish list. <laughs> uh, Wicked Deep, obviously, I need Winterwood. And I really, really need In a Badger Way by Shelley Lawrence. Because Hot and Badgered was really good. And I really want more of this characters. Even though, personally, certain, the, like, the sex scenes in it are not written the best. Word-wise. Because... I'm sorry, there are like 12 different words that you can use to describe the male genitalia or the female genitalia. You don't have to keep using the same word over and over again. You don't have to say things like, my penis entered your vagina, over and over and over again. But other than that, I just love the characters a lot. And Some of the, uh, the books that... I haven't pre-ordered, but I want. <laughs> and so I've just added them to my wish list. I have uh, Five Dark Fates, which is, the, you know, like you said, Three Dark Crowns sequel. Uh, Rebel, which is... Side note real fast. That series really pisses me off. Three Dark Crowns, One Dark Throne, Two Dark Reigns, and then Five Dark Fates? Can you not count? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we're going Sorry. backwards in time or something. Well, it was um, like three, one, two, five. Then I have Rebel by Marie Lu, which is a legend sequel. I've never read any Marie Lu. Um. Then I've got. Oh, Come Tumbling Down, which is the next book in the Wayward Children series by Sean and McGuire. So excited for that one. Still haven't read any of those yet. Oh my gosh, they're so good. I've got um, them from the library. I can't believe, I here's one that I can't believe you haven't pre-ordered. Like, I'm blown away that you don't have this one on your wish list or pre-ordered. The King of Crows by Libba Bray, which is the uh, next Diviner series. But it doesn't come out until 2020. True. So, um, I, that's why it's not on the list. That's okay. for 2020. <laughs> that will be at and, my house. I don't care if I have to sell a kidney for it. That will be at my house. You could pre-order it now. Like the t earlier you pre-order it, the cheaper you're going to get it for. Is it you? You're guaranteed to get the lowest price from the date you buy it. Like from the date you pre-order it. True. So. Even if the price goes, like right now the price is $13.99, but if the price goes up to $18.99, you're still only going to pay $13.99. Or if the price drops down to 
you're going to get the 1099 price whatever the lowest price is from the date that you purchase it i do need that's the price you get i do need to get another hardback copy of diviners because the one that i ordered i ended up receiving the large print <laughs> version and i'm like this is a little too large of a print for me i've gotten that by mistake before too let's see also two others on my list winterwood well wicked deep and uh the night country which is the hazelwood sequel by M melissa albert see i i like the cover for that so if i end up liking hazelwood because you sent me hazelwood um if i end up liking it i will end up getting the second one it's interesting but what sucks is hazelwood when they republic when they re-released it for the paperback the paperback cover is like really freaking pretty i don't know that i've seen it the paperback cover instead of it being gold it's like this sea foamy green instead of gold like instead of go gold foil um, where's... yeah instead of all of this being gold it's all like this sea foamy bluish like green color throughout it all oh my goodness so pretty no i don't have that edition i have the owl crate one which is like instead of being black it's green but i do love the end pages though Yeah, uh, she's right, Night Fear. It doesn't charge you until um, the book is released. But you're guaranteed, whatever day you that you pre-order it, you're guaranteed to get that rate or lower. So no matter where it fluctuates, whatever the lowest price is that it gets to, that's the price you pay. I mean... I need to update my wish list though, because I have a wish list that only has graphic novels and manga on it. Mm -hmm. Mom wanted a wish list on Amazon for graphic novels and manga for me, because she knows they're a little expensive. She's like, my wish list has so much ridiculousness on it. Like, I mean, besides fifty gazillion books being on it, I have, I, have, I found this game. Which right now they're out of stock apparently, but it's called the Bring Your Own Book Game. <laughs> I was like, I need this game. And there's like some cute decor things, like bookish pillows and like little bookish trinkets and stuff and bookish ornaments and like a lot of bookish ornaments. I got some, I don't know why the hair dyes in there, but there's a hair dye thing in there i have some weird like halloween decor which i thought was cool for pictures i've got a uh, 100 things to do bucket list poster i've got mugs mostly bookish mugs some bookish shirts some bookish socks oh, more bookish mugs graphic novels some bath bombs more bookish mugs i'm a big nerd some pop <laughs> figures see um a lot of different pop figures see my mom was asking me she's like what should i get you for your birthday your birthday is the next month she's like and if you say books i swear to god i was like give me gift cards then so i can buy books <laughs> i have so a book buy me bookshelves because i have two bookshelves over here that need to be replaced just buy me new bookshelves <laughs> yeah i i tell people i'm like when especially with marty's mom like she she would go and she would order like from the top of my wish list and i said no 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 scroll down somewhere in the middle bottom whatever and pick something do I, i'm like don't pick anything from the very top because those are the things i see all the time or what's on top <laughs> And then I'm like, if if I go to my wish list and I don't see what I see all the time on top, then I'll know what's coming to me. <laughs> yes. I'm like, so just pick anything in the, you know in, in the middle because I don't like look 
at it, like enough to know where, you know, everything that's on there, but I see the top enough. And eventually those, those things on the top, as I add more stuff, those things get pushed down towards the middle. So it works. But the, like my cousin bought me a couple of books for Christmas and so did my uncle and they all bought me things I already own. Like my cousin bought me Harry Potter and the Cursed Child in paperback. I own it in hardback, so I'm like, why do I have two copies? Sorry, I'm reading the comments. <laughs> Nightfear says they have so many pop figures on a separate Amazon wish list. I mean, I mean if you look around this room, at, I'm still needing one Luna pop. I find it. I want my trifecta of my Lunas. I need the Luna with the lion head. Because I've got that Luna. Yeah, I just put everything on one wish list. You know, as, as far as the stuff that's like for me, there's separate like Xander's got his own wish list because he's constantly telling me he, you know, the things he wants. And I'm like, just just add it to your wish list. And then I was like, that way, whenever, you know, Christmas or whatever comes along, I'll know what to look at. Oh. And uh, Becca's got like a wish list. It's like called Becca's New Apartment. And, um, I've got uh, an art supplies one. We've got a bunch of different wish lists, but those are all like for individual people. I used to do but, that too, but then I got a little too cray cray, so I had to delete all of them because then I quit talking to people and friends like ended up like being ex friends. So I was like, your wish list is fine. But uh, books and cars, I have the only Harry Potter pops I own are Luna, but I do own a shit ton. A Fantastic Beast Pops. Because I have... Over here you got Newt and Tina. Over there you've got Queenie and... What's his name? The human. The muggle. Human. The muggle. I have a wish list. <laughs> I have a wish list that's called New House. And it's... So much bookish, bookish stuff to decorate my house. <laughs> I'm like, I want a book house. I want it all to be books. And then my Nifflers, my baby Nifflers. Oh my gosh, those are so cute. They were keychains, and I took the keychain part off because they sit next to my Niffler pup, and I wanted my baby Nifflers to be little baby Nifflers next to my Niffler because they're just so adorable. You can get the baby Niffler pop keychains at Walmart for like five bucks. They were too cute not to get. I spent money I should have spent on groceries on this. Because I have a problem. Um, still, like, it's still not my favorite. My favorite any action figure thing is my little baby Cthulhu. What is that from? H.P. Lovecraft. He's oh. a... It's a classic author. He wrote a bunch of sci-fi horror novels in the past that involve monsters like he created the Cthulhu monster which I played a lot of D&D &D, so I played up against a lot of Cthulhu creatures so I'm a nerd <laughs> I still have are we all here <laughs> are we all a little bit of a nerd here yeah. that's what makes yeah. it that's why we're here in the first place <laughs> but there are different levels of nerd um that I have gone full on playing Dungeons and Dragging and actually LARPing as characters. Which is well, that's not, that's not the nerd thing. See, there's okay. like, the geek there, thing. there's nerds and then there's like geeks and. I'm a dork. 
A dork is a combination of a nerd and a geek. Yeah, there's there's, there's dorks. And you've the got dork my- is also the name of a whale's penis. So I thought it was fitting that I'm a dork. <laughs> but, but yeah, just everything. Even my shelves aren't perfect yet because I still have a box of stuff that I need to open and put on my shelves. My shelves are currently like shoved into this little area waiting for me to paint my walls. I have all the paint to paint my walls in my library. I just haven't found the time to do it. Okay. I've got to the point in my room that if I'm not careful, I may have to move my futon to the center of the room and put more bookshelves on that wall. <laughs> if I'm not careful. My walls are going to be pink. Yes, I have heard a white wolf. Freaking love White Wolf. Listen. Listen. We could go on for hours. We have. We have gone on for hours. (laughs) True. But let's just say that anything involving wolves, I probably know of it. But I know what White Wolf is. A friend of mine. So you have a thing for witches and wolves. And unicorns. I have have you one. read um, Drink, Slay, Love? Not yet. I want to, though. Apparently there are unicorns in that. Um, I was also told I need to read Struck My Heart or Lightning Struck My Heart by T.J. Klune. Apparently these the sidekick is um, a unicorn, a gay unicorn that had his horn like ripped off his head. And apparently he's sassy. A friend of mine told me a gay unicorn that had his horn like snapped off. So it's like a little nubbin thing there. And um, I'm getting my popples due up. All you need is a gigantic butterfly clip. Yep. I kind of like that. <laughs> it's cute. Okay, I'm having fun with my hair. <laughs> <laughs> but no, so I used to play a bunch of White Wolf games, girl. Listen. Girl. I would have an Xbox and my PlayStation still if I didn't have to sell them when roommates up and left me and I needed to pay rent. So listen. And my money kind of now has been like spent on books. Like I shouldn't have bought work, 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 work. (laughs) I shouldn't have bought it, but I found another witch book that I didn't own. Labyrinth Lost. I've heard of that. Apparently okay. it's about apparently it's about brujas. So Hispanic witches. And I'm like, I found it for like two bucks. I was like, that's good condition, thank you. <laughs> like I need another this shelf right here. Here, 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 and here are all witches. Which please? Like, listen. <laughs> <laughs> and then underneath are all my contemporaries and my mangas. Because my contemporaries were up here, but now they're down here. I got tired of seeing contemporaries on the white. And then, like, behind... Because you caress your books. <laughs> like, and then behind me on the black are my thrillers from here to home. Except for the b- bottom shelf, that's my Cassandra Claire. With my Bane Chronicle, my two Bane books positioned outwards. And then the science shelf, and then Harry Potter, and just randomness. And then... 
and then PC cast and Kristen cast and then Lebo Bray's up here. And then Fantasy. And then over there. I don't know if you realize this, but we actually are limited to eight hours of. <laughs> we have not been on here for. <laughs> we are not Kayla for Books and Lala, okay? Who gets on while she's wasted to do a live show and last eight hours. A year old, but we have gone almost three and a half. It's still not the longest live show we've done. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, goodness. And then over there, you've got my James, my Grissom, my Steven, and my Classics. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, did we cover everything we wanted to cover? <laughs> did we? <laughs> I think we covered everything and then 50 other things. <laughs> I suffer from ooh shiny squirrel. Okay, <laughs> on tangents of talking. Yeah, I, I, I thought we were done like two and a half hours ago. <laughs> Wait, but, what's on your TBR? What did I point out? Oh, labyrinth lost. Okay, I was like, what's on your TBR? Night fear. Um, I mentioned a lot of books just now. <laughs> But Marty just wrote me and he asked if I was still live showing. I'm yeah. Tell him, yeah, Clint doesn't want to stop talking. <laughs> stop talking. That means I have to go do stuff and I don't want to go do stuff. Okay. I'm being lazy. Yeah, but you know what? As long as we're doing this, we're not reading either. And we are still in a readathon. I mean, true. Yes, but this is this has been lots of fun too. It has one of these live shows, or we just need to get on for a live show and drink and carry on about whatever the hell we want to talk about. <laughs> now, see, that's what we should have done. What we should have done was did our like hour and then ended and then been like, okay, we're gonna start another live show to just shoot the shit and talk about whatever we want. And then that way when people came to like watch a live show later, <laughs> just that one hour of us talking, and then if they wanted to see more, they could go to the other. I mean, we can do that for falls. That way we can separate it because we're having that special guest. Yeah, also our special guest is probably not gonna wanna sit here for three, four hours. <laughs> I don't know. It is Adriana. She knows how I talk, so. <laughs> I mean, I do talk to her quite often, so. I am for sure going to be read ahead of time next. So, um, we were saying earlier that we will post our announcement videos for the Fall into Reading-a-thon somewhere around the end of august beginning of september typically we'll do it actually i can show you a date on them typically we'll post our announcement video a month before the readathon actually starts so or four weeks one two three august 26th wait no hold on here we go one, two, three. Yeah, August 26th is when we should um, post our announcement video. Let me make a note of that. And we typically will do our TBRs two weeks before. So. Yeah. August 26th would be when we do our announcement. September 9th is when I would at least put my TBR out for it. And then the 23rd is when it will start. And our live show will be the 28th. For those that want to know that date ahead of time, so you are scheduling and stuff. Yeah. 
we've already talked to Adriana about making sure we have that date. Um, As, uh, we were, she, said, she said that date was good for her. The 21st is when she's doing a panel. I don't remember where she said she's doing the panel. But I've already messaged her and made sure we get all that. And when we know times and stuff, we'll give you all that in the announcement. We may, we'll, we'll probably try to, I'm thinking we'll probably plan our live show at like the same time that we did today. Cause I thought that worked out well. It did. It wasn't too late. And it lit people that are in like England and other places that want to join us and can't stay up that late. Yeah. And if, you know, if we decided to do like this and run over and they wanted to stay up late, it would be a Saturday night. So it would be okay. Um, but yeah, I think it would probably be around the same time. And that way also, if Cody is hosting with us, she'll be able to be mm -hmm. in the live show. Because it'll be eight o'clock her time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've already told my boss that the 28th I need off. So I'm not rushing because Adriana's joining us. I would rather like not rush on that day. Same. Like today, I had to rush home. <laughs> I totally told my boss I was taking that day off. You don't got a boss. <laughs> you are the boss. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> you told your kid you want nothing to do with him that day to go away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, tell I'm telling Xander he's got to go somewhere else and leave me alone that day. <laughs> yes. And Marty... Bye. <laughs> I don't even know what Marty look I have to look at his schedule because I have his schedule like programmed in so I know like what he's always working. Um so oh he'll be off that day. That will be wait. Wait, what? September. 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 We did say September. Yes. Crap, we did. Oh, okay. I have to see what those dates were. <sighs> Hold on. I have to I have to look. I might be trying to do a live show from an unknown location <laughs> because um I might be on a diving trip. I don't know. I'll have to look. Uh. Oh shit, you did say you were do going diving at the end of September. <laughs> yeah. At the I'm beginning like, of the live show. <laughs> yeah, I'm like trying to find where my mom and I were talking about. I, I mean, I was... Uh, I mean, if, no, we can, no, no, no. if we need to, we can do the live show on my channel. Now that I live somewhere that has internet, I'll be a little bit more comfortable doing that. And people can just join me on my channel. And but I still, I still want to be on the... You'll, you'll still be on it. It's just that way you don't have to worry about getting it set up. I can get it set up. You'll just have to walk me through it. <laughs> well, no, setting it up is easy. I mean, I have—I don't have a problem with setting it up. I've just got to make sure that where you're at, I'm you somewhere where I have internet. Just at least have it on your phone. You'll be good there. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, I got to see my little panic. I have I have these moments where I like. Oh my gosh, y'all. Like, I had messages. I had a panic this morning because it was like 10 o'clock in the morning or 10 30. And I was like, oh crap, the live show is today. Completely forgot <laughs> that the live show is today. And I was thinking that it was going to be at 9 a.m. because I have another live show on the 6th and that's at 9 a.m. And I was like, oh crap. I missed the live show on my channel. 
<laughs> I was thinking it was at 9 a.m. today. And I'm like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. I'm just I, I'm an hour and a half late. But no. Then I wrote, I, I was like freaking out writing Clint going, what? what's going on? And I was in the shower when I received said messages. So I didn't respond right quick. Yeah, I had to like go and like look at my um, announcement video to see what time the live show was supposed to be. Because my brain is just, I spent too much time in the sun. I think I've been working on yard work and I've spent too much time in the sun, I believe. It's fried my brain. I spent too much time this week stressing out for yesterday being inventory day at work and I showed up at work and they were done. And I'm like, I stressed out that much and flipping out and my anxiety going haywire for nothing. But yeah, we'll get off of here because we we have kind of been talking for a bit and it's all my fault. My bad. I, I think we should um, do something like this in the future where we Talk about all of the readathon stuff in the, that video and then say, okay, for anybody that would like to continue just chatting about anything and everything, we're going to do another live show immediately following. That way, for people that come and want to watch the live show in the future, they're not going to be like, oh my God, I don't want to sit through four hours of live show and I just want to see the readathon stuff. Then they can come and watch just like the one hour read, you know, one hour live show about the readathon, and then yeah, for, for those people that like to just hang out and chat about anything and everything, which they can come to the could, second one. We could possibly throw in extra live shows here and there, just with us because we want to shoot the shit with you guys and see if you guys want to ask us things or we'll ask you guys things just for fun. Who knows? Me and Mel may decide one day just to go live because we're bored when we're not stressed out about other stuff. Yeah, we could just do like a live drunk chat. Yeah. I like that. We may start doing those. Who knows? Would y'all be up for something like that? Because I've got some alcohol in the kitchen that really needs to be drank. I got a giant bottle of Moscato just waiting, just calling my name. I got whatever the wine is in there, and I've got pumpkin spice uh, Captain Morgan rum in there, too, to drink. So. <laughs> they, they said yes. All right. Well, just keep an eye on our Twitter accounts, and we'll let you know. <laughs> oh, my God. Megan says, oh, my God, a live drunk chat would be hilarious. Oh my gosh, did you see my last live drunk thing? <laughs> did you see the weekend reading? Live show, just go watch that one and you'll get a little sneak peek. But then I'm okay, back. Okay, yeah, the spring in the read, I was, I, yeah, I was already drunk at the beginning of that one. <laughs> oh, that one was funny. But then there was another one back when I lived at the other house and we did a um i think it was just me i was just i was doing a live chat and i was <laughs> whoo i had a lot and i stayed on for many many hours just talking oh, yeah and i remember and i literally was crawling to bed at the end I like managed to crawl to my living room and I'm laying on my living room floor and I don't even remember who it was I was writing. I was writing somebody. <laughs> from but I was like just writing on my phone on Twitter. I was like, yeah, I hadn't made it to my room yet. <laughs> can we just stay? Can we just imagine both of us drunk on the same live show? How come? When do we want to do this? Because I'm, I'm, I'm down. I'm, I'm down with like ending this vlog, ending this now and starting a new one and doing a drunk one now. Let me go get the alcohol. <laughs> Except, hold on. Except, they were supposed to read. And tomorrow's the last day. And I have to finish this big 
freaking book. Okay. Okay. So we will plan for one in August of just hanging out. When we're, oh, we're we're gonna plan one way before that. Oh, July. Sorry, it's June. <laughs> wow, I thought. Wow, my brain. I skipped over my birthday month. Hey, my birthday is the twentieth. Twentieth of July. And I, and I already sent you your birthday gift like forever ago. So. Well, yeah, <laughs> and I did a whole video on it and me screeching at the books. <laughs> I love that. I was getting so tickled watching you open those. But we could do a live show on my birthday that night. It's a Saturday. I work till one. We could, do that. we could do that. And we celebrate my birthday in style. Yeah, we could we could do a live drunk show. Do you want to do it here or on your channel? Let's do it on my channel, saying this is my birthday. And gives me a little practice for me uploading a live thing. We can do that. Everyone's down for it. Let's go. <laughs> okay, now back to y'all's regularly scheduled programs, because YouTube just alerted me that I have five videos I need to watch. <laughs> because they just like kept popping up over here in the corner. From other booktubers. <laughs> We're in a readathon. You need to read. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna put the videos on the background. This is how I take in my books. <laughs> I read so quickly. See, I've gotten another 10 pages down. Good to go. <laughs> you do that, and I'm over here, and I just do this. So I take it in. Yay, five more pages. Five more pages. <laughs> Again, not to mess with alcohol, guys. I was going to say, this is like the preview of what a live drunk show is going to be like with us. Wow. <laughs> and we haven't even had anything to drink. Sorry, I'm still trying to take my book in here. <laughs> and this is when I see my subscriber count losing. <laughs> but I guess we'll end it here for real. <laughs> Back to y'all's regular schedule program and get more reading. Yay. It's been, it's been lots and lots and lots of fun. Oh, my gosh. I lost three subscribers. Did you? I did. Oh, God. I don't know when that happened. I'm guessing throughout the course of this live show. Oh, God. I gained subscribers. Boo. Put on my channel real fast. Oh, I got two okay. subscribers. Okay, y'all can subscribe to both of us. <laughs> yes. I have to look. I, I think it actually did happen while we were in this live show. I'm going to go see if I can look at that. Probably because we uh, on for too long. Let's see. It's the 29th. Okay, so I, I lost one. Yeah. So I lost one after one hour of the live show. I lost one after two hours of the live show. I lost one after three hours of the live show. Oh, God. <laughs> they didn't like the long live shows. They're they like, screw this. The name of Julie and Chelsea and them then. Because theirs are a hell of a lot longer. <laughs> Where? But, let's end the live show here before you lose any more. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys for joining us. This is lots of fun. I will see y'all on Twitter tomorrow. And I'll run probably quite a few reading sprints tomorrow. Because I have nothing planned but filming. So, yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give us the big thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed, do that. If you sat through all of this time, you might as well subscribe. And uh, we'll watch our Instagrams, our Twitters, all that stuff, because we will let y'all know that way. And so probably through posts on here. 
if and when we plan a just live drunk chat just for the hell of it. And uh, yeah, I guess just remember to always be completely you. And until next time, bye. bye. bye.